Well, they're both great leaders, that's for sure. Rod Langway, we know what he's done in Washington, winning the Norris Trophy the last couple of years, and Larry's been there himself, and they've both been on Stanley Cup teams, and it's going to be a good battle between them. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem sung by Mr. Janusz Wolny. the officials for tonight's game. There you see him, Brian Lewis in the middle of uh, your picture, Leon Stickle to the right, John D'Amico to the left, all from the National Hockey League. Team USA against Team Canada here for both teams undefeated so far, their second game of the Canada Cup. There you see the standings, the United States 7-1 winners over Sweden and Canada 7-2 winners over Germany. The Soviet Union also undefeated so far. Their victory over Czechoslovakia last night here at the Montreal Forum. And the scoring leaders in the tournament, as you see it, Wayne Gretzky, the hat trick the other night against Germany in a four-point night. Mike Bossy had two goals, also Mike Gartner. And there you see Brian Trottier and David Jensen, both with two points, along with Varnikov of the Soviet Union. And there's the man of the hour, the goaltender, the man the United States pinning a lot of hopes on, Tom Barrasso. And there's the lineup he'll be facing tonight. It's an impressive one, of course, with tremendous speed and great goal scoring power. Not dressed for Canada tonight will be Kevin Lowe, who's got a strained knee, and Steve Eiserman, a hip pointer, suffered the other night. Brian Bellis and Randy Gregg will play for Canada. And in the goal for Team Canada, Brent Fuhr. Not dressed for the United States tonight will be Bob Brooks and Tom Hirsch, Aaron Brutton, and Mark Crisco are in the lineup. And that's not a bad lineup either, especially on the defensive core, but up front with a Brian Trottier in the middle. They're very strong up the middle of this United States team. So Team Canada definitely is not taking them lightly. Well, they know they got the work cut out for them. They know it's going to be a tough hockey game. A few years ago when Canada played the United States, it was almost like everybody figured Canada was going to win, but times have changed. The United States has had a lot of first-round picks in the draft the last few years, and uh, they've got a good hockey team here. Well, Larry Robinson makes the check in against the boards there. That one on Mark Johnson. Buck has cleared out to center ice, and Trottier's got it out there. Nearly checked off his stick by Gartner, and it's fired back into the Team Canada zone once again. Fjord steps out, clears it along the boards. Trottier blasts it in there, right on. Fjord clears it to the side of the net. Robinson has to collect it. Round the net, he comes. Robinson moving to center ice with that puck. Now he's got Tonelli on the left wing. He gives him the puck, tries to get it back to Robinson, and he fired it right in there. Now Gartner, Jellios along the boards. Robinson pinches in from the point. The puck takes a bad bounce, and Joey Mullen picks it up. Mullen from center ice driving it in on Grant Fuhr, and Doug Wilson's back there to pick it up for Team Canada. Wilson of the Chicago Blackhawks ahead for Tonelli. Benelli moving down to the line. Here's his shot, and that deflects up into the crowd. We'll have a face-off near the line. 
in the U.S. zone. Well, it'll be interesting to see what line matchups there are tonight. Uh, they started out with Brent Sutter against Brian Trotje. They're two teammates. Maybe there might be some reason that uh, maybe Brent can beat Brian on the, uh, the faceoffs. I know I, I found Brian to be one of the toughest guys to face off against the national in the National Hockey League, and we'll see if they remain in that match. Also notice that Mark Johnson was on a wing there. He's been known to do that. We'll see how this lines up later, but we've got the great one out there right now, Wayne Gretzky, and they've got Neil Broughton out there to check him. Out at center ice, Housley. Housley trying to move ahead. Goulet hooked it away from him momentarily and up to cause an offside at the team count of the line. So we'll have a face off outside the blue line. We've played a minute and seven seconds here. Just underway at the Montreal Forum. We talk about the matchups between Canada and the United States over the years. At World Championship play, they were always noted for being very, very rough games. Just played pure North American style hockey even in the international world that they faced often overseas. As I said the Europeans were often in awe of what was happening out there. They couldn't believe the kind of contact that was made in those games. Here's Goulet to the line now. Goulet cutting through the defense, tries to reach through, and he is hooked down to the ice, and there's going to be a penalty to Mike Ramsey. Ramsey all of a sudden saw Goulet give it that little kick that he has, and he had to hook him down. And Goulet with a little burst of speed got in around Ramsey, and Ramsey felt that if he didn't hook him, he might be in clear for a, a good shot, and Goulet can shoot the puck. He goes down, and we'll see what Team Canada's power play can do now. You know, that's the one thing I think if, if the United States gets bad penalties against a team with the offensive power that Canada has, that could hurt them. Uh, this is where, of course, a Barrasso has to be very, very good. Well, they're going to really need to count on Barrasso. Uh, team Canada does have a number of better shooters than Team USA, and Team USA can't afford to be in the penalty box. Now, uh, with the kind of talent Canada's got right now, uh, they can put an awful lot of pressure on. And right now, they've got Gretzky out there, along with Middleton. And on the line is Goulet as well. The point men are Coffey and Huddy. Now, Roberts clearing it, but he lost it right to Gretzky. Gretzky tried to flip it back to Middleton, was unable to get it to him. Huddy keeps it in at the point, tried to slide it through. But for checking on the play was Bobby Carpenter, and it winds up at center ice once again. Goulet feeding it back into his own zone. Coffee's got it there. Coffee ahead. Goulet again. Goulet put it behind Coffee. He'll have to go back for it. Here's Middleton. Middleton starting out now. He's got some great moves. Very slick. Here's Gretzky. He lost his balance as he hit the line and has fired down the ice once again. Muir out of the net. Flips it up off the boards. Gretzky's back. Gretzky kicks it up. Gives it now out to Coffee to Anderson ahead now. To the line. They were unable to get it across the line as Bossy was stopped. Now Bossy tries to get it to center ice. Anderson to Gretzky. Gretzky to the line. Gretzky swinging back. He'll look for a man now. Now slides it across ice. And it was just deflected away by Mark Johnson. Out at center ice it comes again. Down into the Team Canada zone. And Raymond Bork is there with 49 seconds left in the penalty. Bork moving the puck. To the blue line, cradles it, feeds it up at center ice for Peter Stasny. Stasny feeding it into the USA zone. Barrasso's out of the net, leaves it. Bossy moves in. Pusco is in there as well. Peter Stasny around behind the net. On this side now, Glenn Anderson into the corner it goes. Try to control it in there is Bossy. He's got it, forks up the boards, gets into the blue line. There's the shot, it's blocked at the defense. Both center playing without a stick, but at center ice it's Coffey. Coffey taking that puck away, and 16 seconds left in the power play now as Coffey starts out. Coffey, he can fly, he hits the line now, lost possession of the puck as he hit the line. And it's clear back out to center ice with five seconds left in the power play. Anderson's got the puck, but the whistle goes, and Langway having a bit of a discussion down there, and... And that seems to be settled. We'll take a break. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Get ready. It's a good time for doubles at McDonald's. We're cooking up something special just for you. Double hamburgers. For September only, we're serving double hamburgers with two 100% pure Canadian beef patties for only 99 cents. But that's not all. We're cooking up double cheeseburgers, too. Two slices of processed cheese and double beef for only $1.19. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Remember, after September 30th, they're gone. You saw there where uh, United States are putting a lot of pressure on Team Canada Team Canada had the power play in their zone. They do not set up in a box formation. There's something like the checks the other night where they forced the, the player with the puck to make a move awful quick, and uh, it worked on that, that occasion. Team Canada didn't have any, any chances to score at all. Coincidental minors handed out to Coffee and Langway. 
So now we're at the tag end of the other penalty. So the teams are at even strength now as Brian Bellows is over the line. Bellows, Bellows, cutting to the side of the net now. Bellows trying to knock that puck down. Winds up in the corner, cleared back to Wilson. He's got the big shot. There it is. And wow, what a save. Out in the corner. Jamming it in there now. Christian is poke free. Bellows trying to get loose. Here's Wilson again. Wilson clearing it in front of the net and behind the defense there was Messier, but he just couldn't get that pass. Clear down the ice once again, and Wilson's back to get it. Icing will be called. We'll have a face-off back down in the USA zone. Well, Barrasso's looked pretty good so far. He's had some good shots. There's Doug Wilson. He can shoot the puck for as hard as anybody in the National Hockey League. He caught, caught it good there, but Barrasso was there to get his pad on it. Uh, Wilson of the Chicago Blacks. Look at this shot. This is a tremendous blast. He's put everything into it there, falling forward. Barrasso really wasn't screened at all. He could see that puck coming in all the way. And he kept it down. And he controlled the rebound, which is important. So Messier out there now, up front. They're each team playing a man short along with Anderson, Wilson, and Robinson at the blue line. Centering for the United States is Neil Broughton. And his former high school line mate out there, Brian Erickson, Butsy Erickson, they call him. Chris Chelios out there along with Gord Roberts. Chelios almost a sensational debut in the National Hockey League that carried right through into the Stanley Cup playoffs. He sure helped the Montreal Canadiens. He sure helped the Canadians. Uh, they had somewhat of a tough season, but they redeemed themselves in the playoffs, and he was one of the reasons for it. Now here's a chance for Anderson. He shot it through a crowd. He missed the net with it, and Barrasso leans out, covers it up, holds for another faceoff. Again, that all started with Wilson. While they're feeding him, he's getting lots of room to shoot tonight. They're going to have to to pay maybe a little more attention to him and not give him them open shots uh, at the point because sooner or later it's going to cost him. But one style uh, you notice tonight is that the Canadians are shooting the puck, whereas uh, compared to the Russians and the, uh, the Czechoslovakian teams, they seem to want to hang on to it and make the perfect play. Where the, our style of hockey, we like to shoot from anywhere. No line, you can't score if you don't shoot it. And uh, the only thing about it is that they believe in the high percentage shot. As again, Barrasso scooped that one up off the face off to prevent further action around his goal crease. 312 gone in the period. Make that 412 gone in the period. A minute 15 remaining in the coincidental minors. The Langway and Coffey. Messier trying to get the draw against Bobby Carpenter. Messier in against the boards. He's ridden in there by Gord Roberts. Messier poking it free. Out front of the net now. And it's Christian bringing it to center ice. Former captain of the Winnipeg Jets. Kelly has gave Anderson a shot. And I think there was a two-line pass, too. And that was whistled dead. And we'll have a face-off in the center ice zone. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. With all the choices that Commerce Loan gave us, we could take our first real rest in years. Rest, Henry. <laughs> the Commerce Personal Loan helped us brighten up this room. With a lot less paperwork than this. At the Commerce, we give you a choice of fixed or variable interest rates. Not everyone does. And we'll even let you pay off your loan early with no penalty. So I didn't have to fit the loan. The loan fit me. You can count on the Commerce. Chelios was a little frustrated here. They saw these two guys yakking at each other at the faceoff. He took a hack at him. That's a bad time to take a penalty. It makes a four on three. There's going to be a lot of room out there. I notice Team Canada has Gretzky on the ice now. You got uh, Bork who can shoot the puck and Larry Robinson on the points. And you have a better chance of scoring when it's a four on three actually than you do on a five on threes or five on four. Now Trotty out there now to try and kill this one off along with Gord Roberts and Mike Ramsey. Robinson moving up very quickly. They got him up front. The Montreal Canadiens do a lot of that. Uh, they play him up front often on a power play because he can cause so much havoc in front of a goaltender. He's a big fellow who's hard to move. Uh, Glenn Sather saw the wisdom in that and is doing the same thing here. Here's Bork over the line now. Bork getting it over. Gretzky. Gretzky back to Bork now with a little room. Here comes the shot. Passed it off. And Bossy at the side of the net. Now back to Bork again at the blue line. Bork. Rink wide. Gretzky. Gretzky. And they crisscross right at the blue line now as Gretzky gives it to Bork. Bork passes it back to Gretzky. Gretzky, Bork, here comes the shot. It's off a leg in front of the net. I think Gord Roberts was in the way of that one. Now here's Gretzky again. Gretzky, here's Bork. Bork to Gretzky. Gretzky getting set now, makes the move around the defense. Gretzky gets set loose in front. And finally it's Robinson who passed it back to Bossy. To run to Bork. Bork 
Over now for Gretzky. Look at Robinson in front of that net. Rolls it through, and the USA finally picks it up and clears it down the ice as Langway comes out of the penalty box along with Coffey. Look at Langway now. A little slugging inside the blue line as Bossy hits the line once again. Bossy cutting through the defense. Bossy trying to get set. And it is Robinson picking it up. He swings into the corner with it. Behind the net. Out in front, and Bossy fanned on it. Carpenter shoots it down the ice. Back to get it will be Messier. 36 seconds left in the power play out at center ice now. Anderson the pass from Messier. Anderson tried to cut through. Chelios took him out of the play and it's back at center ice. Coffey. Coffey gets the return pass. Rink wide. Gretzky and Anderson was in a step ahead of the play. It's called on the offside with 22 seconds left in the power play. Well, Larry Robinson was standing in front of the net doing his job and notice Barrasso was taking a shot at him with his stick. They were poking at each other. Uh, but he was doing his job. He wants to get Barrasso off his game. They do not want Barrasso seeing all the puck coming in there, and uh, he did a good job at it. Maybe Team Canada overpassed a little bit. Maybe should have shot a little more. Well, there's Glenn Sather. You saw Glenn Anderson, who got his first taste of international hockey in the Olympic year, 1980. He played for Team Canada. was a great player for Team Canada. 22 seconds left in the penalty. Six minutes and seven seconds gone in the period. Here's Anderson against the boards now. Digs it loose out in front. Messier got it caught up in his skate. Back it comes towards Coffey, but Christian beat him to the puck and clears it down the ice. Huddy will go back to get it. Huddy with six seconds left in the power play. Starts out now. Huddy to Messier. Messier at center ice, backhanding it in. Playing the puck at the side of his own net is Barrasso. Leaves for Fusco. Fusco clears it around the boards, but Huddy is there, backhanding it. Now it's Messier. Messier clearing it rink wide and can't get it through to Anderson. Langway now. The penalty is over. The teams are at even strength. And here's Langway carrying the puck himself. Alone in front. He scores! Great individual effort by Rod Langway. And there was a real rush. Well, a rushing defenseman. Langway's really not noted for his offensive abilities. He's noted for his defensive abilities, but he made a, a great play in walking around the Canadian defenseman. He looked like a forward the way he picked the corner right upstairs. Right around Huddy there, up top. Made a great shot and a great play. That's going to give Team USA a real boost, that's for sure. Here's Langway. He's got lots of time after he gets around Huddy. Huddy lost his step a little bit. It's the strength of Langway there that uh, got him in there. He's a big, strong man, 220 pounds, and he just used his weight to push Huddy out of the way. Now Rod Langway gets the goal. 6.44 the time of the goal, and the United States takes a 1-0 lead in this hockey game. He split Huddy and Coffee. And in he went. All the face off at center ice. Here's Erickson trying to hit the line, and Bork cuts back with the puck. Tanelli, Tanelli at center ice for Sutter. Sutter shoots it in and steered into the corner. Chelios is after it against the boards. Chelios ahead for Broughton. Broughton at center ice. That's Aaron Broughton feeding it off on the wing. There's the shot, and it's loved by Fuhr. He holds on and will have a face off. U.S. leading 1 0. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Starlinger, do you know what day it is? Uh, it's Herbert D. Langley Day. Who's Herbert D. Langley? He gave us our first surprise holiday. One day we had to shut down production because we didn't have stock. Herbert wasn't using long distance to phone suppliers. With long distance, you control stock immediately and eliminate costly mistakes. Where's Herbert now? We're not. Sure. Business long distance. Today's way to operate. This program is broadcast under rights granted by Hockey Canada and the NHL Players Association. It's protected by copyright and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or reuse of this program without the express written permission of the CTV Television Network and TV Labatt is forbidden. Face off deep in the Team Canada zone. Bobby Carpenter out there now with Olchek and Brian Lawton. A couple of great youngsters out there right now and high draft choices, may I say. And from the face off, Canada breaks out. Tonelli getting it away and hooked to the ice is Mike Gartner. And there's going to be a penalty again for the United States. And how many of these can they get before they pay the price? Well, it's going to cost them sooner or later, that's for sure. They have to have to do a little more skating and not so much hooking. When a guy's ahead of you like that and you can't catch him, there's no sense hooking him because he's the defenseman's in front of him. He's not really going anywhere. It's a bad penalty. Maybe a little uh, nervousness on Olaszczuk's part. He's a young fellow, and it's the first time he's played against the pros, and 
Might be a little nervous. Speaking. Well, Olchuk was a star with the U.S. Olympic team. Very high draft choice for the Chicago Blackhawks uh, this June, and will be joining the Blackhawks immediately following the USA effort here in the Canada Cup. He was the third choice in the draft. Now the puck from the faceoff clear past Doug Wilson down to Grant Fuhrer in the Team Canada goal. Wilson at the side of his net now. Brian Trotje is out there killing penalties again. So is Mark Johnson. Ramsey and Langway, the defensive pairing right now as Peter Stosny hits the line for Canada. Stosny checked by Langway. Back into the corner it goes. Bourne kicks it loose. Langway gets a piece of it, but now here's Stosny around behind the net. Stosny out in front. Wilson moves in, and he shoveled the puck off into the corner for Stosny. Behind the net, Bourne in the corner. Bourne getting it back to Robinson at the blue line. Robinson to Bourne. Bourne circling. Kabasi. Stosny behind the net. Out in front. Nobody there, but it's kept in by a valiant effort from Robinson. Into the corner it goes around the boards. Langway will chase it down in the corner. After him is Bourne. It's cleared back. Robinson keeps it in again. He gets the puck for Stosny. Stosny. Bossy's alone in front. So is Bourne. Bourne was checked by Trottier and it's cleared out to center ice. Robinson will go back in his own zone now with 59 seconds left in the power play advantage for Team Canada. Robinson. At center ice, Gretzky's over the line now. Goulet catching up. It's dropped back to Bossy. Bossy just cradling that puck to Wilson. Wilson back to Bossy now with a little more room. Back to Wilson. Wilson in deep for Gretzky. He's checked out in front now. Here's Coffey moving in. Coffey over for Wilson. The big shot. It's on. And a save is made by Barrasso and out for Mullen. Mullen at center ice for the United States. And a collision out there between Wilson and Mullen. And he's going to send Wilson off. Don't like the call. Well, that was a tough call. Uh, had his head down. Mullen had his head down here a little bit. Wilson jumped off his feet to, to hit him. If Wilson would have stayed on his feet, he wouldn't have got the penalty. They give him a charging penalty because he, his feet left the ice. Well, the fans don't like Brian Lewis's call, but Wilson is off and it nullifies the power play advantage for Team Canada. It came with 26 seconds left in the penalty. And so now Wilson's off. And Canada will have to kill a penalty off for about a minute and a half. Well, the face off deep in the Team Canada zone. Messier out there along with Coffee and Gretzky. Messier taking the draw behind the net for Coffee. Coffee ahead. Huddy at center ice now. Huddy with Messier. Messier gets the pass, works to the line, feeds it in, takes a hit as he tried to work in after that puck. Mike Ramsey hit him up against the boards. Now here's Coffee. Coffee moving along, having trouble handling that puck, gets the shot away in any case. Now Gretzky kicking it loose behind the net. Gretzky. Messier. Gretzky again. He's checked away from the puck. And now Broughton. Broughton is a man alone out in front of the, in the middle of the ice. The penalty is over, but they just couldn't get the puck to him. Now back in over the line, Gretzky now, Messier cutting in front of the net, Gretzky getting set, clears it in front, gets it again, shoots it right in there, and Barrasso's down and holds on. Took it off his chest protector and covered up. So it's 1-0, United States, 9-28, gone in the first period. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Did you ever have to make up your mind? You pick up a one and leave the other behind. It's not often easy. Not often kind Did you ever have to make up your mind? Did you ever have to finally decide To say yes to one that the other one had? Introducing Double Blue Blue and Blue Light Two great beers, one tough decision Did you ever have to finally decide? Well, there's big Doug Wilson in the penalty box He's got a minute 19 left in his penalty 10.32 remaining in the first period. A goal by Rod Langway has made it 1-0 from the faceoff. United States with the lead as Chris Chelio circles back with it. Tonelli doing the forechecking there as he gets it to Roberts on the far side. Trottier. Trottier to the line now. Here's the booze a little bit. Chelios. Number 21 for the United States to Roberts. Roberts to the far boards. Johnson behind the net. Now Trottier. Trottier easing it along the boards. Chelios had to move in quickly. Now behind the net. Mullen. Joey Mullen. Mullen. Dropping it back. Trottier takes a hit from Bork. Behind the net once again. Johnson. Mark Johnson getting that pass. Works it back out to the blue line. Chelios in a crowd. And he shot it right in there high on Grant Fjord. 
Roche running some interference in front of that net. Chelios now. Chelios. Stopping. Now again in for Johnson. Johnson in for Trottier. Trottier across the goal mouth. And it's loose right in the goal mouth area. And finally reaching out with that big stick of his is Grant Pure to cover it up. Well, the USA team, they, they, they had a few good chances here. Canada's playing more of a stationary box. They tried to make a pass out in front there, Trottier, but the defenseman took Mullen right out of the play. He didn't really have a chance on it. Pure covered up. A couple of sets of brothers in the lineup here as you look at Grant Fuhr. The Mullen brothers from the Hell's Kitchen area of Manhattan. Interestingly enough, uh, they learned to play hockey on roller skates originally. And uh, of course, hung around up Madison Square Garden way. Yeah. Brian was a stick boy for the New York Rangers when he was younger. That was a shot by Langway into a crowd hit by Larry Robinson. He got it caught up in his equipment. So the whistle went. The faceoff will be deep in the Team Canada zone. The other brothers are the Brottons from Minnesota. Far different atmosphere, more of a hockey atmosphere, certainly. Russell, Minnesota. That line of the Brottons and Erickson, they played together all through high school. They were one of the top high school lines in Minnesota. The fans remember them. They played together for four years, very effective. Out later, Langway and a crowd hit the post. Langway with a wrist shot, and he hit the post through that screen. Here's Carpenter now. Housley getting it in deep, intercepted by Robinson, and he just eases it out to center ice. Five seconds left in the power play now as Langley gets it to Robinson to Gretzky. Gretzky over to Messier. Messier, he'll hit the line himself. Now he's forced back as Team USA lined up three abreast at the line. The penalty is over. Langway now in deep, shovels it back for Housley. Bill Housley at center ice for Christian. Christian to the line now. Carpenter moving in as Fuhrer steps out of the net. Along the boards for Bossy. Bossy on this side for Bourne, his New York Islander teammate. Bourne overskated the puck. He has to turn around, get it again. Gets to Peter Stosny. Stosny hit a player. It's cleared down into the USA zone by Chelios. Canada's got it in center ice. Here's Peter Stosny over the line now. He stopped. Nice stick handling work there by Ed Olchuk. To Lawton at center ice. Bossy, Bourne over the line. He takes the shot. It's right on. Now Chelios. Old Chuck along the boards, and he clears it out through center ice. Back to get it in his own zone will be Randy Gregg. Gregg stopped up behind his own net now for Team Canada. Gregg ahead at center ice for Peter Stosny. Took that lead pass very well as he brings it down over the line. In front now, here's a chance. The shot is just wide. That one taken for Team Canada by Mike Gartner. Bourne against the boards, and it's clear to center ice. Huddy knocks it down, gives to Bork. Bork. On the far side, Gartner, Gartner hammering it off the boards. Marasso off the heel of his stick, but right there was Chelios. He clears it down the ice, and there'll be an icing call here as Coffee and Huddy go back for it. It's Coffee who touches it, and the faceoff will come back down into the USA zone. Well, the United States are playing a very close checking game. The longer they can keep Team Canada off the scoreboard, the better off they're going to be. We know Team Canada was pumped up coming into this game. They knew they were going to have a tough game, and if they could have got a few goals uh, right at the start, uh, it might have carried on through, but it's going to be one tough hockey game. Well, there's Paul Coffey, one of the greatest offensive style defensemen in NHL history. Had a tremendous year last year. 40 goals, 86 assists on a great offensive team. And certainly was in the running for the Norris Trophy, which was eventually won by Rod Langway, who's playing on the other side of things today. Here's Tonelli fighting off a check. This will do a lot of hard work out there. Watch for him as Tonelli along the boards now. Eases it to Gartner. Gartner back in deep for Sutter. Here's Tonelli now. Tonelli bang away in there now. Got Trotje out there as well. Tonelli, Sutter down on his knees. There's Scrappers. They jam it in against the boards. And finally, as it's covered up, Brian Lewis losing sight of it. He finally decides to call a halt. Then we'll try it from a faceoff again. Well, that's Tonelli's trait right there. Work, work, work. Digs the puck out of the corner. There's great balance. And uh, he makes a lot of plays coming out of the corners for his other winger and his centerman. Well, they got a big gunner on the right side of that line. And Gartner, who has come close to 50 goals in his career in a season. And Sutter and Tonelli are just, just bangers. Trottier facing off against Sutter. Loose again. Here they go, scrambling away at it again. It's hooked loose. 
Sutter jamming in against the boards. Gartner coming in here. You got to like a line that works this hard. Here they come again. Sutter trying to get it out in front. Finally, a shot out past Coffey to center right. Coffey. Drops it back inside the zone. Coffey gets it again. Here's Tonelli. Tonelli hustling down to the line now. Tonelli trying to just force it through. Jams up against the boards with Fusco. Still battling in there. And finally, Fusco goes down with the puck underneath him, and we'll have another faceoff in the U.S. zone with 6.49 remaining in the first period. The United States leading this game by a score of 1 to nothing on a goal by Rod Langway. There's Brian Trotsky. He's had a few views here tonight. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy about him playing for Team USA and leaving Canada, but the rules of the tournament are set up as such that he has that choice, and uh, he has a couple of children in the United States. His wife's from there. He probably plans to live there the rest of his life, and he wanted to play for Team USA, and I really can't say I play for Well, Eddie Westfall has been watching from a, a different angle than we have on this game. Eddie, what's going on down there? Ron, uh, just to give you the idea of how valuable a player like Chico Resch can be sitting on the end of the bench, he's helping along with some of the young defensemen, Mark Fusco, who made a couple of mistakes earlier. Chico helping him out on some of his territorial play. Back up to you, Ron. All right, Erickson over the line now. He saw another shot from Doug Wilson, who is always dangerous with that shot from the blue line. And now Langway just driving it in there. Well, I'll tell you, Langway has been what one would expect from a guy who's won the Norris Trophy the last two years, just dominant out there. I would imagine the Canadians would love to have him back. He's he's played great for them, and uh, you know, I'm sure he's going to win a few more Norris trophies in the next few years. He's the type of leader every hockey club needs. I'm sure he's settling all their defensemen down, and he's great in the dressing room. And he's really a, a help to this, this hockey club. Now you saw Chico at the end of the bench there. Eddie mentioning him as a kind of an extra coach down there. He's a pretty good goaltender they got sitting down this particular night. Messier now moving in. Anderson's there as well. Messier, Messier couldn't hold it. And it's Chelios who hustles behind the net now. He's bumped by Bellows. Messier moves in on Chelios as well. The bouncing puck is corralled there by Anderson. Feeds it in, but Chelios is right there. He's a great skater. Gets it out to Christian. Christian ahead. And the puck goes right past David A. Jensen. And Wilson's around the boards with it. Messier. He just flat beat Gordy Roberts to that puck along the boards. Now Messier's over the line, and with Anderson breaking in too quickly, it's called on the offside. One nothing. U.S. leading. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Timing. It can be critical. Sometimes, just when things seem to be going smoothly, there's a sudden change in life's direction. Decisions have to be made quickly, decisively. Whatever the situation, graduation, marriage, a new job, a family, Crown Life is there to help you make the right move at the right time. Crown Life, official insurer of the Canada Cup. There's the coach of the United States, Bob Johnson. Fixed six times he took American teams to world championship competition starting in 1973. Coached the U.S. in the 1981 Canada Cup. He's got a son playing for him, Mark Johnson, who plays for the Hartford Whalers. And of course, Bob is the coach of the Calgary Flames. And I'll tell you, I have a lot of respect for him. He's a, a great coach. Here's Carpenter working down to the line. The shot, big save on that one by Fuhr. Again, from a fair distance out, it gave Fjord with a clear view of it a chance to react on it. Well, that was a good shot. Carpenter, you know, he scored 30 goals a couple years in the National League, got 28 last year. He can shoot the puck. Fjord was, Fjord was awake on that. He was out in the top of his crease, and he made a good pad save. So now we've got Gretzky out there. You see Grant Fjord, the Edmonton Oilers. It'll be interesting to see how much Wayne Gretzky plays. He's had a little touch of the flu or some food poisoning the last couple of days. He didn't make uh, practice yesterday. He said he's feeling a little better tonight, but uh, we'll see how much ice time he gets. Housley just put it on Goulet's stick. They score! Middleton! Housley gave it away! Goulet to Middleton, and that's how quickly it could turn around. And that was a mistake by Housley. He tried to clear the puck. He was rushed a little bit by Gretzky. Goulet saw Middleton all alone in front of the net. Took a backhand pass out there. Goulet sees Middleton all alone. Middleton around the net. He's one of the better guys in the league. And he just tucked it over the pad of Barrasso. The goal team Canada needed. That's Boy, that'll be a lift for Rick Middleton, too. He's not had a great time of it here at this camp. Boy, he is just so good around the net. There he is. And it's a 1-1 tie here. 
Here's Coffee at center ice now. Coffee firing it in. Fusco back to get it now. Fusco off the boards at center ice. Coffee can't get it. Joey Mullen picks it up. Mullen straight ahead. Jensen, he's checked. That's Mark Johnson who was checked. And Peter Stosny races after it now. Langway reaching back for it. And Stosny shot it weak and wide. Langway. Big rod out to the center ice it comes. Trottier, here's the move. Trottier over the line. He's roughed up against the boards by Charlie Huddy. Fusco. Fusco hits it high in the air as it deflected. It's batted away. Fusco picks it up again. Now he's got a bit of room. Backhand shot off the blocker of Grant Fuhr. Trottier out in front. Another chance for Mark Johnson. Johnson is hooked away. Bossy has to come back for it. Gets it. Starts up. Bossy at center ice with Peter Stosny. Bossy, Bossy just holding that puck, that little extra, trying to get uh, Stosny into the clear, and it just failed to work. Croce freelancing down himself, and he's chased out of the play by Larry Robinson and Paul Coffey. Coffey ahead, gets the return pass, and shoots it in wide. Tonelli just couldn't get in there as he was interfered with by Erickson coming in over the line. Now Broughton on the far side, flipped out to center ice. Down comes Neil Broughton from his brother Aaron. In front! Oh, what a save! Very quick reaction there by Grant Fuhr. Tonelli at center ice. Tonelli poking it free. Robinson moves up. Robinson to the line, and he drips it over top of the net, and it's offside in any case, and we'll have a faceoff outside the blue line. We've got a 1-1 tie. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. There's Neil Broughton. He's one of the better playmakers for the Minnesota North Stars, their leading scorer. He throws a beautiful pass over to Erickson, who was breaking for the net. Fear was right on top of it. He came out and challenged him. That's the kind of saves you have to have if you're going to win hockey games. Well, Grant Fuhr has been sharp. The other guy hasn't been any less sharp, that's for sure. And we've got a 1-1 tie. 9-9. The shots on goal, I think it tells you the story of a pretty even period of hockey. Team Canada knew they were going to be in a tough one tonight. And they have everything that they thought was coming through as the play is offside at the Team Canada line. 324 left in the period. During our first intermission, we'll have highlights from the first game of the Canada Cup, which was played in Halifax, the United States beating Sweden. Brian Trotje had a couple of goals in that game. We'll also hear from Brian Trotje. Bernie and Eddie Westfall will be around with the highlights. And uh, here's Fuhr way out of his net and just unable to get loose was Jensen as he cut in front of the net. Now Wilson got it a little sloppy in his own zone there. Whoa, look at that check. As trying to get out of his zone was Brian Bellows and he took a hit from Mike Ramsey and now Bellows is knocked down. They scored on the other end. Just counted as uh, both Bellows and Ramsey were battling back at the Team Canada line. It took the defenseman right out of the play. Well, Ramsey sacrificed a little bit to hit, hit Bellows. It cost him. Uh, he got caught up the ice. Here's Wilson. It wasn't actually an overpowering shot, but it caught the uh, defenseman's stick. Barrasso stretched, stretched out his leg a little too far and underneath his pad. Uh, one of those plays that was kind of a broken play. I think it hit the defenseman's stick. I'll tell you, off a little. Outside of the goaltenders, the two dominant players in this game outside of the goal have been Doug Wilson and Rod Langway, who have been defensemen. Well, Maybe that... tells you something about the game. Bellow seems to be hurt. Now, that is all, all part of that business that happened right at the blue line. Here it is here. The tough check, and then... Now that's Ramsey, number three. Ramsey sticks him here. Uh, could have been a penalty call there. The ref must have been up ice following the puck and missed that play. Well, he appears to have jarred his neck or something. He's being treated with an ice pack at the back of his neck. So Canada is in front now. The goal scored there by Doug Wilson. And the shocking suddenness of that. Let's see how the United States reacts to it. And Langway loses the puck. Brett skis it low, and he shoots it. And it's just blocked there by Barrasso. 
Gretzky all alone. How often will you see him miss one of those? Carpenter at center ice, Olchuk. Olchuk over the line. Rolls it in front, and reaching for it there was Brian Lawton, but it's covered up by Bure, and they'll hold for a faceoff, and now tempers are getting a little short. Boy, this is showdown all over again. Look at this. Gretzky gets in all alone like that. Majority of the time, it's in the net. But Barras was a big goalie. He's six foot three. He covers a lot of area. He really didn't give Wayne a lot to shoot on. He fell down. His pads are big. He covered a lot of area there. Well, we got a Langway in the middle of a discussion out there. Olchuk was in the middle of that as well, uh, down in the Team Canada zone. There don't appear to be any penalties coming from the. A little bit of shoving that went on, and we'll have a face-off in the Team Canada zone with 2.22 remaining in the first period. What a good period of hockey, and Canada leads the United States 2-1. to one. You know, you talk about the improvement of the U.S. brand of hockey. Consider this. The trophy winners in recent years. Last year, Morasso won the Vesna Trophy. He also won the Rookie of the Year Award, the Calder Trophy. We'll get to all of the other ones in a couple of minutes, but here's Chelios at center ice right now. Roberts bouncing puck and Bossy trying to force it past Mark Johnson. He gets it again and again. He tried to force it this time off Chelios. And it's Joey Mullen who picks it up, gives it a copy. Copy. Now it's the Bork, the Born, Born over the line for Stasny. Stasny's offside on the play. 156 left in the period now, and a faceoff outside the USA blue line. There's Mike Bossy. A couple of goals the other night. Typical Bossy goals. You don't want to see him floating around with any room at all in front of the net because it's guaranteed, I'd say 75% of the time, you'll find the puck behind you if you're the goaltender. Well, out of the goal scorers in the National Hockey League that have scored 300 or more throughout their careers, Bossy's got the best shooting percentage of all of them, so that tells the tale right there. Yeah. We talked about perhaps being the best pure goal scorer in the National Hockey League and we we talked about that the other night with the knowledge that there was a Gretzky around but there are two different kinds of hockey players here's Housley now Housley to the far side out for the United States is Aaron Broughton Broughton with Erickson over the line he's got his brother Neil with him too here's Erickson shot and it flips off a stick and it's just relayed off the stick of pure up against the glass John Erickson turning again. Erickson checks there. Stasny out in front again. Bourne for Canada. Bourne flipping it out through center ice. Ramsey will go back into his own zone to get it. Picking it up. No icing on the play now as Erickson gets the lead pass. Erickson easing it ahead. Neil Broughton couldn't get it. Wilson comes right back again. Wilson. Wilson with it to the line. Mascanelli. Ramsey with less than a minute remaining in the period now. Ramsey and a big check in there. Here's that line again doing its work. Here's Sutter. Into the corner it goes. After it is Gartner. He jams in there, kicks it free. Also moving in there is Tonelli. And it finally is shoveled out to center ice, and Wilson will go back into his own zone for it. Wilson with 40 seconds left in the period to Robinson. Robinson to Tonelli. And Fusco just intercepted that pass and collects it then from Barrasso. Langway, Langway ahead for Lawton. Ryan Lawton of the Minnesota North Stars ahead for Olchuk. Olchuk on over to control it. Fusco gets it back to Langway. Langway in his own zone. Out for Robinson. Robinson ahead again. Canada trying to get set as Gartner gives to Tonelli to Sutter. 15, 13 seconds now remaining in the period. Tonelli, Tonelli trying to get it out in front. He does, and it was just directed towards the net by Gartner, and it appeared to give. Barrasso a little bit of trouble, but he got his glove down on it and holds for the faceoff. Well, you can see tempers are starting to rise a little bit here. We thought that from the start of the game that the emotions would be, be flowing and uh, a little bit of chippiness out there. Well, we've got Robinson, the big fellow who's always been kind of a peacemaker for the Montreal Canadiens, and Rod Langway, who I guess does the same kind of thing, trying to maintain a little cool with his Washington Capitals, and they kind of separate things themselves there and get it toned down. Two pretty big boys. Well, I tell you, you don't want to get into too much of an argument with either one of them because they've also been known to go, and when they do, they go pretty good. Seven seconds left in the period. Canada is leading it. They were down one nothing on a tremendous goal by Rod Langway. They've come back on goals by Rick Middleton from Goulet at 14:46, and Doug Wilson from Anderson and Bellows at 16:59. And it's now two to one. The shots on goal, 11-10, favor Team Canada. 
there's an important face off here with seven seconds left. They have Doug Wilson out there at the top of the circle and when that puck clean to him he's got a shot that can overpower a goalie. Messier is going to be taking the face off. He's one of the better guys in the league uh, to win it. He's lining his guys up here. If three guys right up on the line to uh, stop the American players from coming out to give Doug Wilson time to shoot the puck. Now well, they got it jammed up out there. Now they like to get it to Wilson. Here it comes and his shot is deflected. And it's Trottier who picks it up and brings it out to center ice. Two seconds left. He fires it in. Well, why? That'll be the period. Well, Darrell, we expected a good hockey game. I think we're seeing one. Well, I think uh, the United States can be quite happy with that period coming out uh, only down one goal. They've had a couple good chances. They didn't put them in. I think Barrasso would be over pleased with uh, the second goal he let in. He he overplayed that, that puck a little bit. And, uh, but all in all, pretty good period. All right. Two to one's the score. The goals, Middleton and uh, Wilson for Canada, Langway for the United States. And this is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. You're the Canada in Petro Canada. You own the place. You're the Canada in Petro Canada. You're that smiling face. You're the one we're fresh and bright for. That special friend we do it right for. You're the reason we're good at pleasing. You are Petro Canada. I knew someday I'd find it Got to find out what's behind it Find out what's behind your perfect smile Got to get up close to you I got to get up close You're close to perfection What's behind the close-up smile? Fresh breath, whiter teeth, and now fluoride You're close to perfection Close-up with fluoride every day Welcome back to the Montreal Forum with Team Canada leading Team USA by a score of two to one. The first period, everything we expected it to be, wide open, very entertaining 20 minutes of action. Rod Langway opening the scoring for Team USA, then Rick Middleton and Doug Wilson scoring for Team Canada. Mike Bossy of Team Canada is our first intermission guest here, seven years in the National Hockey League, Mike, and you've never had fewer than 50 goals. It must feel a little strange, though. You've got uh, your line mate, Brian Trotje, and you're playing against him tonight. Well, that's true. It, uh, you know, we've been playing almost every year together for, for 80 games, and uh, it is a little strange to go out there and, and have to get used to another center ice. Mike, I know you have a lot of respect uh, for Brian Trotje, number one as a hockey player, and uh, number one, his decision to play for Team USA. Well, you know, after everything that was said, uh, on my part and, and on everybody else's part, I guess what it comes down to is what Brian Trotsky, the individual, wanted to do. And uh, he decided to play for the U.S. team, and, uh, you know, that's his right. To, it was his choice, and uh, he was the one who was going to have to live with it. And uh, from what I've heard from Brian himself and from what I've read in the papers, he uh, seems totally satisfied with his decision. So, uh, you know, there's nothing really you can say about it. Mike, back in 1981, uh, you scored eight goals in the Canada Cup. You led all players in terms of goals. What would your approach or how would it differ in preparations this time around compared to 81? Well, my preparation was really the, the only difference was physically. I've uh, been having trouble with my knee ever since the start of training camp. And uh, I guess that was uh, uh, my biggest question, uh, Mark, was whether I was going to play or not. And uh, I decided to play. The knee was, was holding up pretty good. And uh, things are going well so far. As far as, as uh, preparing yourself to, to play goes, uh, it's really it's really hard. Um, you know, all the teams are tough. I think more teams uh, are going to be tough this year than they were in '81. After looking at the Czech-Russia uh, game yesterday, and uh, the U.S. team is is much better than it was uh, the last time. So uh, it's going to be a lot tougher, I think. Mike, everybody uh, touts uh, Team Canada and their games against the Soviet Union and Czechoslovakia, but I know right now you're concerned with Team USA, and this game means a lot. Well, that's true. Before we play Russia or the Czechs, we have to play the U.S. team. And, and uh, you know, they've proved themselves to be a, a tough team so far uh, throughout the exhibition schedule against them. And, and uh, beating the Sweden team uh, the other night 7-1 to one was uh, a good win for them. And I'm sure they built a lot of confidence from that game. Okay, Mike, keep up the good work and uh, 
good play in the balance of this game in the series. Thank you very much. Mike Bossy of the New York Islanders and a member of Team Canada. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. I want Steve, Frank, Mario, Tommy, come on, Mike. I guess that leaves Albert. Hey, he's your kid, brother. You take him. Come on, Albert. At Canadian Tire, we carry the best names in hockey. Bauer, Cooper, CCM. But we're just the beginning. How far you go depends on you. Albert, Albert, Albert. Oh, I sure wish we had a guy like Albert. Yeah. Programming simple. Sure. Try it this way. Now, command the powers of Adam, the complete 80K computer system all in one package. I got it. What if I forget it? Take it home with you. That must cost thousands. Other systems do. With them, word processor, extra. Printer, extra. Memory drives, extra. And Adam? All included. Adam, put up my time travel program. Uh-oh. Command the powers of Adam and program your future. Welcome back to the Montreal Forum with Team Canada leading Team USA by a score of 2-1. to one. Brian Trotje with us, a uh, member of Team USA. Brian, there's quite a tempo. I think it's pretty well the type of game everyone expected. Good hockey game, yeah. It's, it's fast. You can see that uh, both teams are skating really hard. They're moving the puck really well. There's some good scoring opportunities on both ends. Rod's goal was really pretty. And uh, Team Canada worked hard for their two goals. And uh, I don't see the tempo slowing up any of the next two periods either. Brian, not unlike, I guess, when you come into the Montreal Forum with the New York Islanders, the fans get a little down. Uh, it's the citizenship issue uh, this time. Uh, just a few jeers out there. What's your response to that? No, none really. You know, I expected the worst, and uh, you know, they hasn't hasn't been that bad. Uh, most of the people I know aren't aren't uh, booing and jeering. I think they're just following, you know, what I call the ignorant few that uh, that start it, and then they just kind of join in the fun, so to speak. Let's boo. Let's boo Trache. It's it's, it's no big deal, though. Most of the people that I run to on the street are, are still pretty nice. They're, they're nice to me when I come in with the Islanders, and they're, they're still very nice when I come in now, Team USA. Brian, you must be getting a little tired of it, but it has been highly publicized, the citizenship. Uh, basically, what were your thoughts and reasons uh, for playing for Team USA? Well, the number one reason, I want to give, uh, give something back to a country that I make my living from. And, my wife is American and, and my two kids are, are American. I'm probably going to live in the States when I'm done hockey. And I thought now was a, was a good opportunity to take advantage of, uh, of doing something for this country in, in, a, in a big way. And, and uh, hockey is something I can give you know, a lot back to. And uh, by going out and representing the country, I thought it was a good way. And uh, the guys have been really helpful in, in, in the locker room and the coaching staff and, and everybody. It's been a real fun time. Brian, Team USA opened with a 7-1 victory in Halifax over Sweden. You were an integral part of that game, scoring two goals. We have the two goals. I'd like you to comment on them. You got uh, this one first in about 25 seconds. Well, such a good pass by Mark Johnson. I just let it go right on the fly, and I think the goalie was coming back the other way and just caught him moving. And uh, this is the second goal is a good move by Mar uh, Joey Mullen at the blue line. He got around the Swedish defenseman, and I just came in on the blind side pass was perfect and I just pushed it home. That was a great play by Joy Mullen. And so easy when the puck's just laying there and all you got to do is just fire it right away. Okay, Brian, we appreciate you taking time out in between My periods pleasure, here Brian. and good luck for the balance Thank of you. the game. Yeah, we'll need it. <laughs> Brian Trotje of the New York Islanders and Team USA. Of course, media covering the Canada Cup here uh, have a multitude of statistical information. The computer age has really hit Canada Cup 84. Introduced by Hewlett Packard Computers. Hundreds of media professionals from magazines to weeklies to daily newspapers and from radio and television at home and abroad are covering this Canada Cup tournament. It is their job to watch the action on the ice and interpret that action into words and pictures to best describe the course a game takes. Some of this is a matter of opinion. Some is in the form of analysis or criticism. 
Some reporters emphasize the teamwork involved. Others concentrate on the individual. But there is one thing the media must have that is common to all. Statistics. Who scored? The assists. What was the time? Was it a power play goal? Who was in the penalty box? Who was defending? It can sometimes be an experience in itself for a reporter to try and keep up with all the facts and figures necessary. With this in mind, Hewlett Packard Canada Limited created a computer program for the Canada Cup Series. Terence Irwin is the business development manager. Hewlett Packard was approached by Labatt's to be involved in this uh, Canadian sporting event, the Canada Cup. And we, uh, we looked at the, uh, the event, the sports events, and we thought we could make a contribution to the Canada Cup. With our touchscreen capability on, on our Hewlett Packard personal computer, we are able to simplify the task for the user. The user, being the statistician, can merely touch the numbers that are on the screen and get the statistics immediately. And those uh, statistics can be available at the end of the game. Our contribution here will enable the reporters to meet their deadlines faster. We uh, collect shots on goals. Uh, we collect uh, goals, power play goals, even goals, empty net goals. We, uh, we collect uh, penalties, uh, all penalties, and any penalties that we don't have for immediate touch on the screen, we allow the user to type those in. So that when the reports come out, the, uh, the reporters have a, a, a written record of everything that's happened on the ice for that game. We don't see every reporter having one. The reporters are more interested in the game. We have a person dedicated to collecting the shots on goals and the penalties, etc. And then that person is uh, more efficient at it, and the reporters will just get those stats at the end of the game. The written record is very important because reporters today are still, still interested in the written word. They want to see how, how things are going, and we provide that in a nice, clearly read written report. Normally, the reporters would not have the final up-to-date stats for the whole series until the next day, the next afternoon. Those statistics would not be available. But now we have them uh, within 20 minutes of the end of the game. All stats for all games that have completed up to now. And I can tell you, this system has been a great boost and a great help to all the media worldwide covering Canada Cup 84. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Tony Tanti, Jim Paplinski, Kevin Lowe, Rick Vive, Norm Rochefort, Dale Howardchuck, E. Carbono. Seven pros racing against the clock will be the winner. If you select him, you can win one of seven Chrysler lasers in Gillette's Super Skater Contest. So enter where you see this Gillette display and act fast. How about a bowl of Rice Krispies? That's what I like to hear. Good nutritious eating without a sugar coating. That's what I like to hear. How about a bowl? To make your smiles appear. Now you get all of these seven essential nutrients in Kellogg's Rice Krispies, so you can feel as good about them as your kids do. Now that's what I like to hear. The intensity of that first period, Eddie, was uh, really something else. The goaltending was superb. Barrasso, perhaps, could be faulted on that uh, go-ahead goal, but also penalty killing was instrumental in some of the activity. Big part of the USA defenses was in penalty killing. Bernie, early in the period, they killed off quite a few minutes and did an excellent job. There was a lot of play in the U.S. end of the ice, but it was Team USA that struck first. Rod Langway, an unassisted goal. Mark Messier with the puck as he tries to clear it. Langway steps in front intercepts the puck and off he races through center ice. You see him look up, trying to pick up where he should go and he finds a hole between Coffey and Huddy and then he finds the net in the top right hand corner in behind Grant Fuhr, making it one to nothing at 644. Talk about intensity in the hockey game. Wilson, Doug Wilson rolls over Brian Mullen. Tremendous hit, Wilson got a penalty for that. Good penalty killing by Team Canada. Another heavy hit along the boards. You see two players, Mike Ramsey of Team USA, 
as he levels Brian Bellows. Bellows is to get an assist. As the play continues, you see Anderson move in quickly and with his speed down the right side, picks up, drops the puck, and a shot by Wilson, an outstretched leg. Barrasso, and the puck is between his legs, making the score two to one, and of course a lead for Team Canada, a big one and a big goal coming at a good time for Team Canada. They were trying to pick up the play, get the momentum going. Rick Middleton got a goal too, and it's great to see him get on track. No question, it was a fine passing play, and Gretzky threw a great check to get it started. Okay, Eddie, uh, thanks for your expert analysis of the first period, and this is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. <laughs> Today's smart money. Do you know where it's going? It's coming to Continental Bank. Where we use advanced new business and personal banking systems to make sure your money is always in action. Continental Bank of Canada. Team Canada's Bankers in Action. This bad egg could be your key to a really good mouthwash. Smells. The same kind of sulfurous vapors are always building up in our mouths. They're the major cause of bad breath. If you could see them, they might look like this. Lavoris doesn't just mask their smell, it actually helps get rid of those vapors. Lavoris contains zinc chloride, a special ingredient that attracts the sulfur like a magnet, combines with it, and turns it odorless. With Lavoris, your breath stays fresher longer, hour after hour after hour. The excitement of Friday night CFL continues on CTV. September 7th, the high-flying Blue Bombers meet the Ottawa Rough Riders at Winnipeg Stadium. The Rough Riders will be out to defuse the Bombers' explosive offense. Catch all the action on CTV's Friday Night Football, September 7th. Local blackouts in effect. The Canada Cup scoring summary is brought to you by Continental Bank of Canada. Team Canada's bankers in action. Well, there's the story in the first period. Rod Langway shocked this crowd here at the Montreal Forum with a great individual effort and an unassisted goal to get it started. But Rick Middleton came back, Goulet assisting him at 1446. And Doug Wilson, who had five shots on goal, five of the 11 that Canada took in the period, got the go ahead goal for Canada. Anderson and Bellows drawing the assist at 16.59, and that's the way it stands right now at 2-1. to one, Canada leading the United States in what has been an excellent hockey game so far, Darrell. It really has been, and I think Wilson's been the, uh, the best player on the ice for Team Canada thus far. He made a couple good checks, and he's played very well. He's been rushing up, he's getting inside the blue line, and he's getting lots of time to shoot the puck. Well, a face-off at center ice, and they've got Sutter out there against Trottier. Mark Johnson's got the puck. He shoots it in. United States in the dark sweaters as from behind the net now here comes Doug Wilson once again Wilson cuts through at the blue line past Trottier at center ice now and here's Wilson driving it in from center ice and again you can see how he got 39 goals one year uh, from a defensive position at Chicago now here's Tonelli shooting it in that went off the shoulder of Gord Roberts on the U.S. defense. Now swinging away is Sutter. Sutter bring, clearing it, trying to get it out to Robinson. And it's Johnson who brings it out. He can skate. Johnson to the line now. Johnson checked from behind by Gartner. Johnson gets it again. Clears the rink wide. Chelios trying to go in. Looks like he caught a rut in the skate and seemed to lose his balance. Now clear to the side of the net. Robinson. Rottier against the boards along with Gartner. Kept in by Mark Johnson. He clears it around the boards. Tonelli's got it. Tonelli hits that stick that's lying at center ice and doesn't get to Gartner. Now oh, Gartner throws a check in front of the USA bench. Ramsey in against him. It comes back to Robinson. Robinson getting it ahead for Goulet. He couldn't reach that pass. Bill Housley. Housley ahead now. Neil Broughton over the line. Erickson. Broughton. Broughton tried to deflect it in towards Brad Fuhr. Failed to do so. Now here's Aaron Broughton. Rick wide. There's the shot. They score. And it's all tied up. And Brian Erickson has got the goal. And Erickson. Ties this hockey game up. He came very, very close earlier. Aaron Broughton picks the puck up off the boards here. He spots Erickson open on the far side. He makes a perfect shot there. Uh, if you look at Fury, he had a stick off the ice a little bit. You come, when you come out on a guy like that, you should keep your stick right down on the ice. The puck went underneath and in, in the net. 
There it is at 123. And Brian Erickson, this line has been the best for the USA so far. Seems to be doing so much more. Perhaps it's speed with the two Broughtons. But they've perhaps the other aspect, the fact that they played so long together as high school students. And they're reunited. It's probably a new spark for them. It's the first time they've been together you know, since those high school days. Now well, they still talk about that line in the state of Minnesota, one of the greatest in the history, they say, of high school hockey in that area, and perhaps in that country, in the United States. Here's Christian now. Christian Goulet. Goulet bangs it off the boards. We've got a tie hockey game now as Gretzky. Gretzky loses to Christian. Jensen made the check. That stick still out there. Is that another one? Cleared now past Middleton. Out to center ice and Coffee has it. Coffee ahead intended for Goulet. Gretzky was trapped inside the blue line and as it was touched it was called on the delayed offside. Face off inside the blue line. 2-2 tie. There you see it. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. This year, Canadian is going to revolutionize the way you play hockey. Remember this name and this stick. The fiberglass 6001 stick is flexible and durable. And Canadian has made some of the best glove, pad, and stick saves in hockey. And the new Unigard padding system is cooler, better fitting, has less spacing, and is better looking. The complete line of hockey equipment is lightweight and tough. The best protection money can buy. Canadian's goal has always been to keep hockey the tough, clean, exciting sport it was meant to be. In the past two years, over 170,000 kids have been awarded ESSO Medals of Achievement. These minor hockey awards are just one of the many community programs that ESSO supports across Canada. Because to ESSO, it's a good, healthy way for youngsters to grow and develop. And tonight, ESSO is also pleased to provide the Player of the Game Award, a handsome Eskimo carving. We play two minutes and six seconds here in the second period. And it's a 2-2 tie. And the tangle there finally pops free and is shot into the USA zone by Bob Bourne. Behind his net, Roberts. On the boards, Chelios can't get loose. Bounces in front of the net and right there in a rather dangerous position for the U.S. was Bourne, but they recover from that and Carpenter brings it back in. Lawton couldn't get the pass. And back comes Team Canada. This is a three-on-two, but Coffey's pass went a little too far ahead of Bourne for him to grab it. And a center ice, Brian Lawton. Ducks past one check. Coffee shooting it down. They'll be icing here as Roberts goes back to pick it up. And the faceoff will be in the Team Canada zone. So a little slower pace as this period begins. And rather filling each other out. That was a good goal for the United States, early stage of the period, to, to get that goal. Look at Brian Lawton. Uh, he's a first round pick. There was a lot expected of him uh, last year. He had a number of injuries and uh, talked to Ted Sater, and he was impressed with him at training camp. And, uh, there's Mark Johnson. His father's the coach of the hockey club. He's had a number of years experience in international hockey. He's played uh, in the 81 Canada Cup. He's played on a couple United States, States teams over team and he's won a gold medal. So and who will forget the goal he scored with a second left in a period of Lake Placid. That's what caused Victor Tionov to take Vladislav Tretiak out of the game. And the United States went on to beat the Soviet Union in that one. A Cinderella story. Messier in his own zone. Bellows through center ice. Ramsey will have to go back. He was part of that team. Mike Ramsey was only 18 years old then. Flipped up against the board. Strachier out to center ice. Robinson. Robinson backing up near his line. Just taps it back now with Strachier forechecking. It might have been dangerous, but Robinson had his eye on Strachier. Now to the line and whoa. And Strachier had Anderson lined up and he just got a little piece of him. Managed to spin him around. Out of center ice. Pass Joey Mullen. Johnson couldn't get that pass. Ramsey backing into his own zone through center ice and all the way down the ice. We'll get some icing here as Bork goes back to touch it. Face off down in the United States zone. 2 2 tie here. 3 41 gone in the second period. There's Rod Langway. Boy, he has just changed the fortunes of a whole franchise. You talk about a fellow being the franchise for the Washington Capitals when he was acquired. He became the franchise. You play, he's in your division. You play against him a lot. You know, I guess, just how valuable he is. He's very valuable, and he logs a lot of ice time. How he does it game in and game out, I don't know. I guess because he has such a big frame, uh, maybe he can he can get away with it. But they got a couple other guys from Montreal that helped him a lot, too, and a guy like Doug Jarvis and uh, Ang Bloom, and then for Ang Bloom, they got Murphy. So that was a great trade for Washington. Really was. Around the boards now, Bork. Canelli keeping it in. He shoots it in deep. Cusco turns with it. Shoots it to the line and out to center ice now. And Langway will carry the puck. Langway shooting it into the corner. 
Hustling in after it is Aaron Broughton. There's Erickson again with a shot. And now Team Canada. Sutter. There's the grinder line. Sutter. Sutter taking the shot over top of the net. Sutter goes in after it. Erickson against the board. Shovel loose. Out they come once again. Here's Neil Broughton. Broughton. Cutting it in front. Fisco takes the shot. That went off a sprawling Randy Gregg. And it's Sutter. Sutter rink wide. The pass was behind Tonelli, but moving up is Bork. Bork lugging it to the line now. Clears it around the boards. There is Buck against the boards. Chop three. A quick shot right in on the net. That one is taken by Sutter, and it's held for a faceoff. Right at the side of the net now. We've got some jostling going on. As Sutter's in there. Tonelli's in there. Langway's in the middle of it. Good old North American hockey. Everybody gets their emotions going. The tempers start to flare again. But you notice Team USA, after a Team Canada player makes a pass, they take the they take the body out all the time. They take the guy out and not, do not allow him to get back into the play. Look at Langway at the bottom of the screen there. He just pins his guy against the board so that fellow cannot come back into the play. So, uh, Tonelli gave a little extra shot. They're, they're liking them to alley fighters. They're... Boy, they really get involved with that line. Well, they know Brass was a good goalie, and maybe they weren't trying to throw him off his game a little bit, uh, going into the crease and taking a poke at the puck. There's a shot by Coffey from the blue line. Rolls to the goal mouth, and Barrasso goes down and holds on again. Pretty tough to get it over him. He's tall, a little like the Ken Dryden syndrome you had in Montreal, where you get to the point where you try to make an extra play just to get it around the big guy. Well, it definitely you do have an advantage when a goalie is tall and he has uh, large pads and large, you know, a large body to stop the puck. Tony Esposito is that type of goalie. He covers a lot of area and plays his angles very well. So All right, Eddie Westwall is down below. Eddie, what are you seeing? I'm talking with Glenn Resch again, and Glenn, you were talking to Mark Fusco in the first period. Can you give us an idea what you were telling him? Well, you know, he's going to play a lot tonight because he's playing with Rod Langway, and he was a little nervous. It's the first international competition at this level, so I was just trying to keep him thinking about the game and keep his confidence up. Thanks, Jack. Chico Resch. And what they hear from Chico. We'll see some action in this series. Chelio is at center ice now. Jensen. Jensen turning. Over the line comes Christian. Christian. Christian Huddy and down goes Jensen. I'll tell you something. We may have been in on some history there. It's the first time I've ever heard a bench interview done while a game has been underway in, in hockey. Well, Congratulations to Eddie. <laughs> Chico's had lots of experience. Uh, he does the color commentating now and again. And it's good to see him. Yeah, well, he's one of the good guys in this game. Always fun to be around. And a bit of a spectator found something to do tonight. Here's Ramsey. Pure behind the net. Here along the boards, Middleton. Take it out. Here's Ramsey's shot. It's deflected away, and Middleton turns with it now, and out he comes. Middleton at center ice. Down to the line it comes now. Coffee stops, tries to slide in front. Here's Gretzky, and it rolled off the end of his stick. He chases after it, and there's going to be a tripping penalty. And I believe the tripping was on Goulet, and Bobby Carpenter is heading for the penalty box. So we'll take a break. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. When you want delicious candy or to freshen up your breath, you are to keep such handy. It's two mints in one. You are to keep such handy. It's two mints in one. Certs, a delicious combination candy mint and breath mint with Retson to leave your breath feeling fresh and clean. You are to keep such handy. It's two mints in one. Certs. A candy mint and a breath mint. Two mints in one. Two mints in one. And five minutes, 26 seconds. Gretzky makes a little dump pass here into the center. He sees Goulet breaking for a hole. Carpenter tries to pull Goulet down from getting a shot. It's obvious trip. Uh, maybe stop the chance and goal. Well, there's Bobby Carpenter. Highest. Drafted American up to 1981 when he went third in the draft, picked by Washington. I'll never forget that draft. Hartford figured they had a lock on him, and Washington, who were picking ahead of him, grabbed him off. Now Canada on the power play. They've got Doug Wilson out there. Boy, what a defensive pair this is. Talk about moving the puck along, and with a great shot of Wilson and Raymond Bork, with the way he moves the puck, you've got power back there. He drives the puck in now all the way around the boards. It comes back for Bossy. Bossy back to Wilson now. Wilson driving it in. Score! 
You can see it. They're trying to get the puck back to Wilson. That's the pattern. Well, Wilson can shoot the puck as hard as anybody. Goulet's in front of the net doing his job. I think he tipped that puck uh, through the legs of Barrasso. Bossy made a nice play along the boards, keeping control of the puck. When you give Wilson that much time to shoot the puck, you're going to be in trouble. You got to go here. There's Goulet right on the side of the net. Barrasso had no chance in that goal at all whatsoever. Well, there it That's is. The he got to his forehand. There's the deflection. Good goal. Well, another power play. Team U.S. He's taken a number of penalties tonight and it can't continue to do that. It's going to cost them with all these scores that Team Canada has. Now, well, Michelle Goulet, who was last year at 56 goals, the last two years has scored 113 of them. And look at that collision up in front of Grant Fuhr now as Aaron Broughton got in there. With Wilson drawing an assist. And Bossy also getting an assist. So. 5.59 gone in the second period now, and Canada's back in the lead on a power play goal, 3-2. to two. There's Glenn Sather. He knows he's in a, in a bit of a dog fight here. And that may be an understatement, a bit of a dog fight. Neil Broughton about to take the draw here for the United States. There's that line that just scored with Erickson and Aaron Broughton, Neil's brother. They're a year apart, Neil's the older. The elder. Now Randy Gregg, the doctor. Into the corner it goes along the boards. He's roughed up against the boards or does a little roughing up against the boards with Aaron Broughton. Now uh, Erickson's in there as well. Banged off the boards. Messier pops free there. Turning at the blue line now. Erickson. Roberts in front. Knocked down. Bork. Bork quickly turns it around, sends it out to center ice near Messier along with Bossy. Messier had it poked off his stick, and the U.S. turns around with it. Beat it back to the Team Canada line, but Raymond Bork's got it to Bossy. Bossy over the line now, drops it back for Peter Stosny. Stosny over now for Bork. Bork into the crowd. Now here's Stosny. That's loose in front. Two saves there made by Barrasso. Along the boards, Neil Broughton ahead for Erickson. They're looking for a change now as Bork collects the puck at his own line. He shoots it in. And Team Canada will make a change as well. Now along the boards, back to Larry Robinson in the blue line. He shoots it in. Here's Peter Stosny back to Wilson. His shot on the leg. That's scary, that shot. Neil Broughton at center ice. Broughton over the line now. Broughton checked in against the boards by Wilson. What a tremendous game this man is playing. At center ice now. Anderson over the line. Drops it for Bellows in front of the net. Anderson go behind him. Messier unable to control it. Rod Langway picks it up. He clears it up to center ice and Robinson. Robinson over for Doug Wilson. Off the boards now. It's over the line past Wilson. At center ice, Robinson moving up. He just pokes it ahead for Anderson to Messier. Messier's over the line with Bellows. He's tied up. Bellows gets it. His shot just raises the outside of the post. The rebound comes past Anderson. Now here comes the United States. Jensen with that long lead pass at center ice. He drops it off. Now Christian going in. Christian stopped up against the boards, tied up by Robinson. Sutter. Sutter at the side of the net now. The tempo picking up in this game. Big Doug Wilson now clears it ahead. And Sutter with Wilson heading for the bench. Sutter shoots it in. And it deflects over top of the glass and into the crowd. Tremendous action here. 8-10 gone in the second period. Canada leading 3-2. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. He was a man of exacting standards. No detail relating to the character of his beer was too small to merit John Labatt's personal attention. That's how we brew John Labatt Classic today. One of the longest aged beers in the world. It's Croissant brewed in small batches using 100% barley malt. It may cost more than ordinary beers, but because of the man, it's brewed without compromise. John Labatt Classic. Well, there you see Brent Sutter, one of the six from Viking, Alberta. A little bit of a surprise in camp, but you can't ask for anybody to work harder than Brent Sutter did at the training camp. And he just earned his way out of this team with a great deal of pleasure throughout the training camp, worked together. Now Sutter with Gartner, Antonelli, Buck is cleared in again. Ramsey, Ramsey in against the boards. 
Kick three up against the boards now. Huddy. Huddy. Sutter. Sutter shooting it into the side of the net. Tanelli deflected it right in. Another shot right on. That one in front. Sutter. And he hoists it over top of the net. Now it's in against the boards. Coffee. It's deflected in front of the net. Becker shot it to the side of the net, but it was batted to him. And they'll take the face off outside the blue line. It was passed ahead. And they get a big hand. And there's part of that line, the right winger from the Washington Capitals, Mike Gartner. Now you played with him in Munich at the World Championship, Darrell. Uh, great speed and a great shot. Mike Gartner is a great two-way player. He's an honest hockey player, and he's got great speed. He's strong. He can cut in off that wing, and he can score, score goals. And he's a real leader. He's played in the World Championships, I think, three times. And he's doing really well in Washington. Scored 40 goals last year. All right, here's Greg. Shooting it in now, middle and hustling in. Trache checking on him. Clear to Gretzky, he's alone, gets set, shoots it, hit the post, it's loose in front, and Middleton tried to kick it in. Now behind the net. Here's Middleton going down, got the pass back, but there was nobody there in the slot. And out comes the United States with Joey Mullen trying to get through, and Randy Gregg tied him up. Against the boards, Trache, Bork. Bork just shoveling it behind the net now. Bork in against the boards ahead for Middleton. Gretzky's alone, but he couldn't get the pass to him as Lord Roberts was there. Here comes Middleton over the line. Middleton ducks past the bench, shoots it. What a great move, but he just shot it wide. Another shot, that one by Goulet. Now here's Middleton, back to Greg. Now Gretzky. Gretzky's shoved up against the boards. Lord Roberts has it for the United States. He clears it out to center ice, and Randy Gregg comes back, leaves it for Bork. Bork ahead, and center ice past Bob Bourne, Neil Broughton, Aaron Broughton. Broughton over the line, Joey Monaghan set front, and he's dumped in front of the net. No penalty. Out comes Team Canada once again. At center ice, Gretzky caught up to that puck. Gretzky, Gretzky over the line, shot it inside, and just unable to deflect it with Mike Bossy. Here comes the United States. We go end to end here. Robinson back out near the blue line again. Here's Stosny. Stosny over the line. He's got Ford. Ford hit the post. Now along the boards, Wilson. Doug Wilson. He jams in there along with Brian Erickson. Stosny's there. Back out past Wilson and through center right. What tremendous action. Team Canada's really turning it on this period. They've had all sorts of chances. They're just missing hitting the post. Some great action here. Ryan Bellows at the blue line. We've got 9.20 left in the period. Bellows, Bellows, Anderson, Robinson. Robinson coming back. Robinson's over the line. Ducks away from some checking and starts in. Robinson to the corner with Busco. And it's Stosny who follows in, picks up the puck. Stosny jousting for it. It comes out in front of the net. And out comes the United States now at center ice. It's shot right in there. Pure. He feeds it off the board. Past Anderson to center ice. Bill Housley, Ramsey, Bellows picks up the puck, leaves it for Anderson, he's over the line, and Housley just hooked it free and cleared it back out to center ice. Now it's Huddy getting it from Coffey, Huddy shooting it in, all the way around the boards, comes back to Coffey, he clears it back in deep, behind the net, Anderson. Anderson in front, they score, it went off a skate in front of the net, and Anderson will get the goal. Well, there's a break. Team Canada had a few good chances before that. They didn't get the break they needed by hitting goal posts. They're just shooting wide. Anderson comes out from behind the net. Shoots the puck. Hits one of the defensemen's skate. Goes in the net. Team Canada has been sending a forward to the net all night. There you see Bellows, I guess, is in front trying to stir it up with the defenseman. Again, Barrasso really didn't have any chance on that. The puck hit the skate, went right up in the top, top corner. So, Canada goes into a 4-2 lead. Glenn Anderson getting his first goal of the tournament at 11.31. And that capped off a tremendous flurry of action by Team Canada. The Team USA have, seems to be getting a little sloppy in their own end. They, they've been running around a little bit, and that's caused Canada to get the great chances they had. Well, they try and get back their equilibrium here. They've got to face the center line right now. Tonelli and Gardner. Here's Johnson at center ice now. Johnson gets the return pass. Mark Johnson going over the line. He clears it into the corner. Fourth and Johnson going there. Banging away at each other. And it's cleared by Sutter around the net. 
On this side now, Randy Gregg. Gregg trying to move it ahead for Gartner. Sutter backhands it off the boards to Canelli on the far side. He can't get it out over the line. Johnson clearing it back in again. Bork. Bork back in for Tonelli. Tonelli ahead for Sutter, and here comes Canada once again with the pass to Gartner. Gartner over the line. He couldn't corral that puck as he hit the line. Johnson comes back and flips it down into the Team Canada zone, and Doug Wilson's back to get it. Wilson, a long lead pass for Gretzky. Gretzky put it right on Carpenter's stick. He made a good move over the line. There's the shot, and it just deflected by Fuhr wider than that. Now Tonelli. Tonelli ahead, Gretzky on the move now with Carpenter. Gretzky trying to sweep the defense, goes in, and he is tied up by Fusco. Gretzky out in front again, never quit on that all the way. Out in center ice now, Olchuk over the line. Olchuk hooked from behind by Gartner, got back quickly. There's a quick shot taken by Carpenter in front. Big pile up at the goal mouth. Fjord's got the puck, and he holds on. 7.08 left in the period. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. No why GM dealers carry all the genuine GM parts you do-it-yourselfers need because our technicians use all the same genuine GM parts you do. You need genuine GM belts, hoses, filters, spark plugs? We got it. Need genuine GM oils, cleaners, polishes? We got it. Need genuine GM engine parts, body parts, moldings, bumpers? We got it. We've even got splash guards, floor mats, grills, and if we don't have what you need, we'll get it. Made right, priced right. Parts to go at your GM dealer. Here's Olaszczuk making a nice move, trying to turn Larry Robinson inside out. Mike Gartner just bears down on him and pull him down. Hooking penalty. So it's a hooking penalty. Gartner going off. There you see him. Got a little bit behind him, and he just gave it a little extra. And the United States trailing by two goals right now. Doug Wilson getting a new stick at the bench. He's back in set to go and here's this line again that has been good for the U.S. Neil Broughton, Aaron Broughton and Butsy Erickson is his next name. And Robinson off the face off. It's out to center ice now. They got Gretzky out there killing the penalty and Robinson just feeds it down into the U.S. zone. And playing the puck there is Barrasso and he leaves it for Chris Chelios. Chelios with Messier for checking. Chelios is standing behind the net. Delios off for Broughton on the wing. Now this is Neil Broughton at center ice. Broughton for Aaron Broughton. Back to Neil now. He's got Erickson right in front. Couldn't get it to him. Roberts. Roberts in the corner. Robinson. Robinson working behind the net. Feeds it straight up ice. Pass Gretzky. And all the way down into the USA zone. And Canada makes a quick change here. 40 seconds into the penalty. Now at center ice, Neil Broughton. Broughton over the line. Broughton. Good moves. Neil. Bring it rink wide now, and it's off Chelios sticking back out to center ice. Chelios. Canada doing a little chasing right here as Erickson goes in over the line. And it's Tonelli. Tonelli back with it. Tonelli deflecting it up over the glass here at the Montreal Forum. And with 54 seconds left in the power play and 6.02 remaining in the period, the faceoff will be about seven feet inside the Team Canada blue line. Chris Chelios from the United States off the 1984 U.S. Olympic team. His off-season home is San Diego, California, where his father is a businessman, and he is a good hockey player. Well, let's see what Team USA can do on this power play here. They have 54 seconds left. There's only six minutes and two seconds left in the period. They have to get a goal to get back into this hockey game. And there's Mike Gardner on his feet in the penalty box for a moment. Now sits back down, and he'll wait this one out. He's got 54 seconds left. Trottier's out there now, along with Joey Mullen. And Mark Johnson, who plays the right side on the line. They're along the boards, kept in by Trotje, is roughed up against the boards by Ray Bork. Out along the boards to the blue line now. Langway's got it. Langway in deep for Mullen. Mullen cradling that puck back to Langway. Langway has a goal. Langway tried to get it back to Mullen, and it hit the heel of Wayne Gretzky. Skate and back out to center right. Langway. Langway. Over for Chelios. Center ice now, Messier, Messier over the line. Trying to control it and get it back out. Unable to under the checking there from Mullen. Johnson moves in as well. Johnson back out to the blue line. Here's Fusco, his shot, and with Fewer way out of the net, there was nothing to shoot at. Here's Langway, Langway, and he cleared it in front, but it was knocked down by Greg, and Canada comes out three of rest. Gretzky along with Greg. Gretzky clearing into the slot. Messier's shot is off the glove. Greg was doing a good job running interference in front of the net. Center ice again. 
ahead and back into the U.S. zone. Langway back there. Gretzky penalty is over now. Fusco's got the puck. He clears it along the boards. Huddy digs it loose. Got a shot to center ice by Fusco. Ahead for Trotje. Trotje over the line. Backhand shot up on the shoulder of Pure. He taps it over for Bourne. Bourne. Ahead at center ice now. Here comes Canada. Over the line, Peter Stasi made a couple of moves, but he didn't be split the defense as Ramsey played him and not the puck. And it's Lawton bringing it out to center ice. Lawton stopped. Bossy knocks it down. Bourne throws a check out there. Puck is shot in. Coffee. Coffee behind the net on this side for Charlie Huddy. Huddy to Bossy. Bossy at center ice. He cuts through the middle, gives it to Bourne. Bourne clearing it around the board. Stosny in the corner on this side. Stosny, he is lined up there by Ramsey. It's batted along the boards, and they call it for glove to head. We'll have a face-off. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Get ready. It's a good time for doubles at McDonald's. We're cooking up something special just for you. Double hamburgers. For September only, we're serving double hamburgers with two 100% pure Canadian beef patties for only 99 cents. But that's not all. We're cooking up double cheeseburgers, too. Two slices of processed cheese and double beef for only $1.19. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Remember, after September 30th, they're gone. Mike Ramsey, instead of batting the puck, he closes his hand on it and actually throws it. The referee standing right there had to call it. Yeah, a little, a little do it with the guy standing a stride away from you there. <laughs> Sometimes you can get away with when the ref's over the other side of the rink, but he was caught. All right, Canada on the power play. That means Wilson's out there again, and Robinson's got the puck. Here he comes. Here's his shot. He hoisted it over top. That hit the crossbar. I think it did. And it goes high in the air. The Canadian defensemen are getting lots of time to shoot that puck tonight. We saw Doug Wilson shoot it. There's Larry. He can shoot the puck as hard uh, as most defensemen in the league, too. There comes the shot now. We got a chance to see where that hit. It looked like it might have hit the crossbar. It did. It went high in the air. I'll tell you something. What do you do? You have to go out and cover the points. But I'll tell you, you've got to be the bravest man in the world to go out and cover a point when you know that uh, Doug Wilson is winding up with that shot. Well, you have to pressure them so that they do not get time to walk into the puck, such as Larry did there, because they get the 220 pounds behind it. He's in trouble. Now well, it's cleared past Wilson up to center ice now. And Larry cuts across ice. Robinson leads it off the boards for Wilson. Back to Robinson. 4-2. Canada's leading the United States right now. By no means is this game over. Stosny ahead for Bossy. Back to Stosny. Straight up the middle on the backhand. Feed it, fed it back. Gretzky on the far side. They try to get it to him. Now oh, here's Wilson. Wilson, Bossy, Bossy. Good move. Clears it across. Goes right through the crease. Stosny rolled it through, trying to get it to Gretzky. Now the United States with 1.20 left for the power play. Out they come. At center ice, Chelios. His shot. That's off the stick of Wilson. It comes into Fure. He covers it up and holds for a faceoff. 3.21 left in the period. Well, most people talk about Gretzky and his goal scoring abilities. He certainly can score goals, but he makes a lot of great plays. He scores over 100 points every year, and he made a perfect pass there to Peter Stasny, who was falling a little bit. A little tough luck around the net for Peter. He's not finishing his plays the way we know he can. Stasny kind of struggled in camp. He's made this team, and he's getting a regular shift. And you just know that somewhere along the line he is going to come out of it. A minute 12 seconds remaining in the penalty to Mike Ramsey. And starting out from his, behind his own net now. It's cleared out to center ice for Goulet from Coffey. Over the line comes Messier. Messier working in. Messier behind the net now. Messier still with that pocket poked away. Goulet's back there now. He's played well. Buck is into the corner, and Mark Johnson's got it. He clears it to the line, and it's off the glove of Ray Bork and fed back inside the blue line where Coffey's got it. Talk about your mobile defense. How about this one with Coffey and Bork? Third in deep. In the corner now, Anderson. Carpenter along the boards, cleared past Bork and all the way down the ice, and Pure leaves it for Coffey. Coffey cutting in front of his own net. Starts out, gives to Bork. Bork a hit for Anderson. Anderson. Anderson over the line now. Here's Goulet, his shot. It rolls slowly into Barrasso, who covers it up with 21 seconds left in the penalty. 
And we'll have a face off deep inside the U.S. zone as we get a little more of that pushing and shoving. Oh my, says Len Sather. What am I seeing? Well, right now he's seeing his hockey club in front by two goals. 2.30 left in the period. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. These days it pays to shop around. Before you buy, check things out. Look at one, then the rest. Which is best? Will it take lots of wear? How does the quality compare? Don't settle for anything less than the best. Make sure that the product is right for the price. And when all's said and done, chances are you'll choose the one that's made right here by Canadian people, for Canadian people. Before you buy just any product. Think about it, think Canadian. Set for the faceoff. Gretzky's out there. 21 seconds remaining in the power play. Wilson and Robinson, the point men. Bossy, along with Gartner, right now on this power play. Buck is cleared to the blue line. Wilson just shovels it off the boards. Now here's Bossy moving in, gets it back to Wilson again. To Robinson. Robinson to Wilson. A little room now, and here's the shot. It hit a leg out there, and that hurt Chris Jellios. He's on the limp a little bit. Out at center ice, Carpenter. Carpenter to Christian that went behind him. Christian overskated it. Bossy collects it. Bossy just working through center ice. The penalty is over now as Ramsey heads for his own bench. It's back to Wilson. Wilson setting up, trying to bounce it in there now and try to set up a play in front of the net. And it was intercepted. It was cleared out to center ice. Here's Robinson. Robinson ahead. And Bossy went offside. But Robinson circled, gave it to Bork. Bork through the legs there of Braden Gretzky. And it's Chelios. Chelios at center ice for Aaron Broughton. Broughton took a high stick there from Bork as he tried to hit the line. And it's passed right onto the stick of Neil Broughton, but he couldn't hold it. And against the boards, play getting a little choppy now as the checking gets closer. Here's Bork. Bork starting out. Canada. Bork is upended. No penalty. Broughton was trailing on the play. Fans want a penalty. It's not going to come. Ryan Lewis was looking at it all the way and said no. Now center ice Gartner, Gartner, Messier, Messier over the line. Good play now, Anderson going in, he's alone, and he shoots it, and Barrasso makes the save. Now it's Messier, Messier takes the hit in there. It's back near the line, but it's the U.S. who starts out with Erickson. Erickson at center ice, shooting it in, less than a minute remaining in the period now. Fuhr leaves it to the side of the net, and it's Greg. Greg, lead pass, deflected ahead, Bellows, Bellows clears it in, and it's Langway shooting it right back out to center ice for Olchuk. Olchuk over the line. Drops it back. And it's Messier trailing on the play as Lawton couldn't reach it. Messier flipping it in now. Bouncing puck rolling to the side of the USA net. And Langway has it. Langway. Here he comes up on the right wing boards. Langway leading the rush all the way now as he hits the line. Langway. And he's checked from behind. Finelli in there. And the lead pass cleared all the way down the ice. We'll have an icing call here as Olchuk checks it. No, they wave it off. Around the boards it comes. Coffee. Coffee picking it up. Coffee's got the puck now trying to set up. Now over for Sutter. Sutter off the boards in the corner. Sutter again. Tonelli on this side. Tonelli back out of the blue line. Huddy couldn't hold it. Five seconds remaining in the period now. And it's Huddy inside his line. That'll do it for the period. Well, a period that kind of ground down as the final five minutes were played, and the checking got a little closer, but some tremendous action through the first 15 minutes of the period. Well, Team Canada had the majority of the play. They had a lot of good scoring chances. Could have even scored a few more goals. They had a few bad breaks around the net. USA team did not have very many good scoring chances at all. Uh, I think the forwards of Team Canada, the speed, they've been burning the U.S. defensemen a little bit, getting in and getting some good scoring chances. All right, the shots on goal in the period. Canada 10, USA 6. Total shots 21-16 for Team Canada. And Canada goes to the dressing room, leading 4-2 over the United States. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. See this ugly yellow stain? That's what comes from cigar or cigarette smoke. Just think what smoking a pack a day, every day, could do to your teeth. But look. Here's Topol, the smoker's tooth polish that helps remove all kinds of superficial tobacco stains. Topol starts to work immediately to clean your teeth and to help remove these stains. Just use Topol week after week and watch your teeth get brighter and brighter. Topol, the smoker's tooth polish, regular or with fluoride. 
Char broiling, that's what makes a Harvey's hamburger a beautiful thing. Char broiling, yes, but it's really my fresh garnishes. Oh, sure. People just check our menu, order, follow their tray, and when you're through, I start. Laying on the mustard, relish, tomatoes, pickles, onions. They can choose as much as they want of whatever, whatever they, they want at no extra charge. Now, isn't that beautiful? You really can pile it on. No extra charge. Harvey's makes your hamburger a beautiful thing. Murray Costello was president of the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association. You must be particularly delighted, since you're one of the main beneficiaries of this, to see that the targets, the financial targets, are going to be met. Absolutely, John. Uh, what comes out of this goes directly to Hockey Canada, who we work very closely with, particularly in putting together our Olympic team, and that's a, a very important project looking to 88. What is your role in this series? We have no direct role in this series, but as I say, the, the volunteers across the country put together the programming, out of which comes the players that go to the national team mm -hmm. uh, program and the Olympics eventually. So that's an obligation that's fulfilled very nicely out of the proceeds from this program. Well, but these aren't the only proceeds that keep you going. What about the, what about the corporate sponsorship? We see at the beginning of each game here where there's a young player who's honored uh, because of one of the awards. I mean, that's a magnificent thing, and it's a gigantic thing. Give me some, give me some statistics on that. Well, we're very pleased to, that, that the corporate sponsors across Canada have really gotten uh, involved with the CHA, and maybe the best example of that right now is the ESSO Medals of Achievement program. Mm -hmm. The ESSO company uh, started a couple of years ago with the ESSO Medals of Achievement, where three players on each team at every level across Canada can be awarded with the most sportsmanlike, the most improved, or the most valuable player award, a very attractive medal sponsored by ESSO, where the dealers themselves present that. And all of our programs benefit from that, and uh, it's, it's great support from, from the corporations, and we're very pleased. What effect has it had on registration across the country? The registrations are rather constant. We administer programs for some 600,000 kids across the country, and uh, it seems to be holding. We're concerned, though, because of the costs, cost of ice time, cost of equipment, and all the rest. It's, it's getting more difficult each year. I'd like to hear that number, 600,000, though, because last night we had a chap on from the uh, Soviet Federation, and we asked him how many minor registrations. He said two million. Yes, well, that just shows you <laughs> what we're up against. Right? You're doing a wonderful job. Keep up the good work with all your good representatives from across Canada who volunteer so many hours with the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association. We need you. Thank you very Th much. Thank John. you very much for dropping by. Now, Lou Nanny, the, the guy who's done it all for the USA when nobody else would or could. Lou, you know, the National Hockey League has been looking for the real answer to a real all-star game. You really found it tonight. Well, it certainly looks like that could be a success, doesn't it, John? Yeah. Oh, it's There's emotional. There's been some talk about it, and uh, I think eventually you might see it. You might incorporate uh, the United States and, the, and Europeans against the Canadians. That's what they've had some talk about. You know, I recall the days when you used to have the Wisconsin Bobcats, the Green Bay Bobcats, and Lou <laughs> Nanny, and you were about the only guy that ever had a shot at the National Hockey League, but you used to put them together every year, and when old Johnny Mariucci used to tour, we toured Europe together looking for places for you to play. He used to win <laughs> the odd one, but lose most and go home and say, well, we'll try something else the next year. That was a tough grind, but look at it now. Well, it certainly has come a long way, and I think that uh, just the product of hockey throughout the United States is uh, improving with each passing year. We can see by the numbers of players that we get uh, coming into the NHL each season, we know that our program's on the upswing. We know we're developing good players. And just the fact that we're much more of a contender in a Canada Cup series like this compared to what it used to be in 76, <laughs> just as an illustration of the development of the program. You're really, you are a contender, there's no question about that. I mean, you could go all the way in this one and, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be called an upset or a surprise, really, from the class of the players that you have. But it's a very young hockey club, very young hockey club. It certainly is. We've got a couple of guys under 20. We've got uh, about six or eight fellows that, uh, you know, are just the second, first, second, third year in the league. And we have people like uh, Morrill, Langevin, LaFontaine, Howe, and O'Connell that aren't here that would make a big difference in this hockey team. They've all got injuries, otherwise we'd even be better. Tell me about the registration in Minnesota. I understand it's just skyrocketing. Well, we feel we've got uh, about 90,000 kids there, and we have something like 175 high schools that play hockey, and that's really the feeder system after they come up through the bands and midgets, and they go from high schools to college, and we really have been developing a lot of players. 60 American, 60 American born hockey players in the National Hockey League last year. Would you ever dream that when you were trying to crack it that that, that could ever really happen? Well, we didn't think it happened this quickly, but we think it's going to come even faster now because uh, Massachusetts, Michigan, Rhode Island, New England's probably got the equal, in some cases maybe even better, than Minnesota products between 15 and 18 years old at this time. Lou? 
great to have you out there with a club that looks like it can win it all. I used to feel for you, but now <laughs> you're <laughs> on the other John. side of the street, pal. Thank you. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. There's a time we all know when everyone does their best and everything comes together and you leave all the rest. You're number one at what you do. Budweiser with the distinctively clean, smooth, beechwood aged taste that's made it number one. The world's most popular beer. When it comes to lending money, most banks think there's only one way to do it. So if you don't want to do things their way, you might not fit their loan. But at the Commerce, we give you a choice of fixed or variable interest rates. Not everyone does. A choice of ways to repay your loan and we'll even let you pay it off early, with no penalty. <laughs> you see at the Commerce, you don't have to fit the loan. The loan fits you. You can count on the Commerce. This fall, an historic event, as His Holiness Pope John Paul II steps onto Canadian soil in September. From coast to coast, CTV News will cover the celebration of the Pontiff's journey. Later in the month, the royal visit of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and the Duke of Edinburgh to Canada. CTV's comprehensive news team will bring you all the prestige of this regal event. Keeping Canadians informed. CTV News Special Reports. We played 40 minutes here at the Montreal Forum with Team Canada enjoying the two-goal lead. The coach of Team USA is Bob Johnson. And Bob, we want to thank you for taking time to join us in the studio. Quite a tempo uh, to the, uh, this match. Well, they, they, they threw it on pretty good in the second period. Uh, they got a lot of firepower, and uh, their four lines are a great offensive punch, and uh, they got us a little disorganized in that second period and put a lot of pressure on us, and uh, we're very fortunate. We're only down by two, and somehow we got to come back and get back in the game. Bob, you've been involved with international hockey uh, for quite some time. You've coached Team USA at the World Hockey Championships. The 81 Canada Cup, uh, it's a challenge you really relish. Well, I enjoy it. I think any time you get involved with the best players in the world, it, it has to be enjoyable. Uh, uh, this is the best uh, tournament uh, ever, and uh, these are the best players. And uh, I mean, the lineup they have, and uh, watching the Russians and Czechs play last night, uh, I think the players should just uh, be honored to be in this tournament. It speaks well, though, for the growth and development of uh, hockey in the United States that you can uh, skate with the best players on Team Canada. Well, uh, that one line we had out there, I think all three just graduated from high school, and uh, they're young kids. We have, we have five uh, players off the Olympic team. Uh, I mean, this is a great experience for them. Uh, they're gonna, uh, this tournament will make those players into much better players, and they should have fine careers in the National Hockey League. Bob, what does it mean to have the likes of uh, Brian Trotje and uh, Rod Langway, two uh, truly great individuals and uh, two all-stars? Well, with the young kids, they look up to them. And, uh, we need their leadership. Uh, obviously, with Langway back there, it gives us a, a real uh, a strong point. Uh, Trotje has been just great in our camp. He's the last player off the ice in every practice. And uh, the players admire him and respect him. And, uh, and like I said, uh, it's a great experience for uh, these young kids. You opened successfully with a 7-1 win over Sweden, down by two in this one. What's your approach now going into the third period? Well, we have to go with three lines now. It's going to be tough to tempo so fast, but uh, we, we're, we're down in the position with a couple of our players are injured. We'll have to just go with three lines, three groups of five, and uh, try to pick it up and get back in the game. Uh, you know, we're just two shots away. Okay, Bob, good luck to you. Thank you. Bob Johnson, the coach of Team USA and also the coach of the Calgary Flames of the NHL. Now we have the... General Manager of the Philadelphia Flyers, Bobby Clark, and uh, Bob, I know we were watching uh, part of the game there uh, on the TV monitors. You've been up in the stands. How have you enjoyed it? I've enjoyed it. It's been great hockey. The Temple last night and tonight has just been terrific. And last night, uh, overall, the hockey players may have been a little better, but this is a lot better hockey game to watch. Bob, you've been involved with international hockey. Uh, what are some of your fond recollections representing Canada so proudly? Well, obviously, 72 for myself and the players that were there was probably the highlight of all international hockey. Uh, 76 when Sittler scored in overtime was tremendous for us too and I had some bad moments when we got beat real bad in New York but overall I think that it's a very rewarding experience and any player who gets a chance to play should take it. And you mentioned the 76 series uh, you had a big goal in the third period of that game that kept Team Canada alive and I recall the Czechs came back got a couple and then Sittler's winner. 
How do you feel being a rookie again, hitting in this time now as a general manager in the NHL? Go from an old player to a young general manager quick. I'm looking forward to it. I, I think that at this stage of my hockey career, this was the best thing that could ever happen to me. And uh, we've got a very young organization. We've got a very young hockey team now. And we've got lots of enthusiasm. And I think we're going to do something. Was that your goal when you started out as a junior in Flin Flon? I know to make the NHL was number one, but did you look down uh, the road and say, hey, I'd like to coach or be manager? I don't think I ever said that I wanted to be a general manager. I never really liked coaching. I was an assistant coach once, and I, I never really liked that, but I don't think you can plan on being a general manager when you are a player. I certainly took advantage of everything that come around in hockey and come along in hockey to learn more about the game, and I think it's paid off for me. Well, good luck in the season ahead, and you also have a new coach, uh, Mike Keenan, and uh, the two of you uh, joining forces should be a good year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bobby Clark, the general manager of the Philadelphia Flyers. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Halfway through the party, everyone ran out of things to say. Then at the stroke of midnight, someone appeared with the Sperry PC. It looked like most other personal computers, but it had a more comfortable keyboard. Dramatic color graphics, IBM software compatibility, and it ran 50% faster than the IBM PC. Now everyone had something to talk about again. The Sperry PC, what the personal computer should have been in the first place. Timing. It can be critical. Sometimes, just when things seem to be going smoothly, there's a sudden change in life's direction. Decisions have to be made quickly, decisively. Whatever the situation, graduation, marriage, a new job, a family, Crown Life is there to help you make the right move at the right time. Crown Life, official insurer of the Canada Cup. Well, that second period, Eddie, uh, started with Canada leading, but not for long as Erickson tied it up, and uh, it was very entertaining 20 minutes of play. You can talk about the Russians, you can talk about the Czechs, Bernie, but that period we just saw, there isn't any two teams anywhere that could play it with any more intensity. A lot of it, of course, happened because of some of the penalties that, uh, that occurred, but Team Canada very determined to get ahead in the hockey game and stay. And let's take a look now at the goals that were scored early, very early, in the second period. Broughton and Carpenter helping out along the boards in total control with the pass. There's Erickson as he puts it between the legs of Grant Fuhr, making the score 2-2 two to two at 123. The Canadians, look how they use that shot to get it in on the power play. A lot of coaches don't particularly care for that, but it worked here as the Team Canada gets the puck back and a bullet drive by Wilson deflected by Goulet standing to the right of Barrasso and that made the score three to two with Carpenter in the penalty box. At 11.31 of the second period, again, the puck shot in around the boards. This time, back at the point, Bossy has a chance to handle the puck. I should say that was Huddy. It went between the legs and then went to Anderson. It was between Messier's legs, and when Anderson shot the puck, it deflected off one of Barrasso's defensemen into the net giving Canada a four to two lead. And that's a pretty big lead the way they played the second period. Well, Ed, we're all looking forward to the upcoming period. Should be action of plenty in this one with Canada holding on to that two goal lead. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Here's something new. So you'd better look twice. Yes, it's Labatt's light. Don't it look nice? You see the bottle's brand new With a twist off cap too Still tastes light and so smooth And it's looking so new Yes, it's the best light I have a problem. My complexion is part dry and part oily, especially between and over my eyes. That's combination skin, and it isn't unusual. Try new Cuticura soap. Cuticura? Yes. New Cuticura is formulated with cleansers to remove excess oil and moisturizing ingredients that act as conditioners to help your dry patches feel soft and smooth. Fights oily skin, fights dry skin too, for a fresh, beautiful complexion. Do you have combination skin problems? Try new Cuticura soap. There are two sides to each of us, the emotional 
and the logical. Here's a mouthwash that appeals to both. Listermit with fluoride, with all the fresh mint taste and breath protection you need. And Listermit has fluoride, a proven cavity fighter. And it's recognized by the Canadian Dental Association. So when your emotional side wants great breath protection and your logical side wants to help prevent cavities, Listermit with fluoride gets it all together every morning. The Canada Cup Scoring Summary is brought to you by Continental Bank of Canada. Team Canada's Bankers in Action. Well, there's the story on the second period. Canada entered the period leading 2-1, to one, but very quickly Brian Erickson from Broughton uh, made it a 2-2 hockey game, but then Bobby Carpenter picked up a tripping penalty 26 seconds after that was called. Michelle Goulet scored from Wilson and Bossy. That was the go-ahead goal at 3-2. to two. Then Glenn Anderson from Coffee and Huddy at 11:31 to make it 4-2. Canada outshot the United States 10-6 in the period. Overall, 21-16. And let's see what the third period holds in store. Interesting comments there as we look at Grant Fuhr. Uh, Daryl from Bob Johnson, who says now he's going to go with three lines. And I'll tell you, three lines in a game with this kind of pace uh, really is going to be pretty tough on those three lines. Well, I guess they're looking at, for one period, the guy should be able to go for that base he's going to try to get a couple goals and he feels he has to play the, the players that are going to score those goals probably the Broughton line who's played very well tonight Trache's line and I would imagine he might go with either Christian uh, that line there they got a young line in Ola Chocolat and Carpenter who are only 20 years of age uh, maybe they'll go with the more experienced players well Lawton is one year removed from high school Olchuk is just out of high school uh, and the Olympic team and Carpenter's two years removed from high school so that's so no sooner do we say they're not going to go with them. Guess who's on the ice, Daryl? Oh, really? <laughs> OK. That's why I'm not a coach. <laughs> All right. Well, he's out there a lot and took the draw. Carpenter's there as well in old check. So uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe a uh, little bit of a smoke screen coming from the coach, too. We'll see. Wilson going back in his own zone to get it. And it hops over the glass. Well, so much for the expert analysis. 12 seconds gone in the period. There is uh, Tom Barrasso. He's played well tonight, but he has been under intense pressure. And all those shooters on Team Canada, this is what Glenn Sather wanted. He wanted a team that could keep the pressure on. And it's interesting watching that game last night, seeing the Soviets play Czechoslovakia, and seeing this team play tonight, Team Canada, and you have to look ahead and say, boy, those are going to be some battles. And they're, they look like they're pretty even, those hockey teams right now. There are going to be some battles. and. In those games, Canada's going to have to maintain that pace that they had in the second period here tonight. The three periods of hockey, if they're going to beat those hockey players. Here's Anderson coming out at center ice now with Messier. Anderson over the line, shoots it. It's off Langway's leg. Messier trails, picks it up. Messier shooting it rink wide, trying to knock it out of midair with Brian Bellows. Langway picks it up behind his net, off the boards for Bobby Carpenter. Carpenter trying to duck around the check there of Bellows. He got it out to center ice, but Robinson then steps into Lawton. Bello steps into Langway, and the loose puck slides into Fusco inside his own zone. Fusco, Carpenter, Carpenter coming out over the line, and the whistle goes, and we'll have a face off yep. in the center ice zone. Uh, Eddie, what's going on down there? Yeah, I, I'm down at uh, rinkside here. We've got Harry Sinnon with me, and uh, the concerns of some general managers, Harry, uh, of course, players getting injured. Rick Middleton seemed to be limping there in the second period. What does that uh, make you think? Well, it makes me think if he's hurt too badly, I don't want him to play anymore. Would you pull him out of the uh, series? Well, I don't want him to play hurt. Uh, I'm going to try and find out when this uh, game's over, Eddie, but uh, I don't want him to participate if he's hurt in any way. He's uh, too important to our franchise. Thanks a lot, Harry Sinden. All right. Well, plain words from Harry Sinden. Uh, you talk about Harry Sinden. He was, of course, part of the Whitby Dunlop team that uh, won some world championships for Canada back in the uh, 57, 58. As a defenseman, one of the finest playmaking defensemen I ever saw. There's the penalties that were handed out in that little fracas in center ice, the high sticking going to Mark Fusco and Mark Messier. And that comes at the 44 second mark. Trottier facing off against Gretzky, fed back inside the United States zone. Roberts is there. Takes it behind his own net. Gord Roberts let it pass. Trottier as he tried to knock that down. It's back near the line of Team Canada. 
Teams are even strength, of course. Here's Gretzky breaking in. Gretzky circling against the boards and Edith Bell under his own power there. And Johnson. Johnson. Trottier. Trottier over the line. Checked away from him by Ray Bork. Still kept in. Gretzky coming back. Knocked that puck down. It rolls along the line. And finally it's knocked down and cleared out to center ice by Mark Johnson. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. They're waiting for you. First, there was lightning. Now, there's thunder. From Vivid Loud Speakers, the Thunder Series. Computer design, 150 watt speaker monitor with seven years parts and labor warranty. Now, there's thunder. Vivid Loud Speakers blow the competition away. Vivid, vivid, vivid. Now available at the brick. Tonight's opposition player of the game will receive the sleek new Canon T-70. It puts the accuracy of a computer into every shot automatically. The Canon T-70, like Gretzky, it makes the great shots simple. Oh, there's Doug Kelcher. <laughs> Doug, who's so helpful to us. It's like he's at the other end of some communication somewhere. Doug's working with Labatt's and helping us out with the communication with Team Canada. Our intermissions. What doesn't he do? Well, here's Goulet deep in his own zone now. Gretzky out at center ice. Gretzky down over the line now catching up as Ray Bork. They drop it. Bork just had to fight off the check from Broughton who chased him all the way across ice. Now Goulet moves in. Roberts is there. Gretzky in as well. Chelios up with the puck and along the boards. Trying to get past Gretzky. Fights his way to center ice. Gretzky right on top of him. Chelios still with that puck now. Bossy gives him a run. He goes in against the board. Still has that puck. Look at this. Finally, he loses it as Ray Bork picks it off his stick. Took four players, Darrell. Chelios is a good young defenseman. We're going to see a lot of him in the National Hockey League. He can handle that puck. He's very good offensively, and he's pretty good defensively, too. Erickson inside his own zone as Chelios again checked Gretzky. This time it's Langway with the puck. He shoots it in. Goes deep into the Team Canada zone, and Wilson... Here he comes, dominant tonight at center ice. Down over the line now, fed back. Here's Wilson, got some room. There's the shot. It's right on. That's his seventh shot of the hockey game. Back out at center ice, it's Christian. Christian down over the line. Now Christian trying to sweep around Larry Robinson, and he was tied up on the play. Carpenter behind the net, Wilson. Wilson circling away from the checking. Wilson starting out now ahead for Peter Stasny. One second left in the penalties. Here's Stasny over the line, stops up, now gives a good pass to Bossy, to Robinson, there's a quick shot. That one right on, taken by Messier. Behind the net now, Cusco just leaves it there, and the United States starting out. It's cleared down through center ice and into the Team Canada zone. Robinson's back to touch it. Icing will be called back into the U.S. zone for the faceoff. There's Big Larry. He told me in the dressing room a couple of nights ago that Really, he's felt the best about playing hockey that he has in five or six years. I guess you know, you'd think back to the years when Montreal Canadiens were winning the Stanley Cup. The Canadians fell on a bit of hard times, had a good playoff last year, and Larry now has kind of been reborn a little bit. Perhaps the company is doing it for him. Well, that's nice to see. Larry played in 76, he played in 81, and it's good to see him back here. And again, a team needs a guy like Larry Robinson. He keeps the guys loose in the dressing room. He's a leader, both on and off the ice. And it's good to see that he's enjoying hockey again. I know he's taking a little bit of flack from the fans here in Montreal. And he played very well in the playoffs last year. And that's why he's here again uh, this year. Into the corner on this side now. It's Chelios again. Chelios. Or Joey Mullen. Mullen at center ice. Mullen, good move as he got by Gartner. Fed it ahead through Mark Johnson's legs. In deep now. And on this side, Canada starting out with Tonelli. Tonelli just shot it off a stick. Croce knocked it out of midair. Here's Tonelli trailing on the play. Tonelli. And he gets it to Huddy, who golfs it into the U.S. zone. Barrasso at the side of his net. Chelios clearing it around. Coffee against the boards. And he's beaten by Croce. And it's Sutter who comes back and gets it now. Coffee. Cutting in front of his own net. Paul Coffey of the Edmonton Oilers. Ahead now for Gartner. Gartner over the line. This shot right on. The long rebound. And it's cleared back out near the line. Kept in by Coffey. But again, the U.S. recovering with Chelios. Chelios to Johnson at center ice. Johnson over the line. Johnson getting set. The shot right on. Sure. Took it off his chest protector. And it's cleared out of harm's way by the defense. As Charlie Huddy got in the way of that. Housley. Comes right back in over the line now. Stops up. Housley. The shot. It's deflected off a couple of legs. Quick shot. Hit the goal post. 
A backhand shot there, taken right at the side of the net by Joe Mullen. At center ice, Gretzky. Gretzky clears it to an open wing, and then he was run against the boards by Mike Ramsey. Now Housley. Housley to the line. Copy. Just check that away. Now ahead. Rick Middleton. Middleton. Ahead for Gretzky. Gretzky into the corner. Digs it loose. Stick handles it. Try to throw it in front for Middleton. And it's clear back out to center ice. Ray Bork. Bork off the boards now. Messier. Messier getting over the line, but he is unable to get free. Goulet back out at center ice now. Randy Gregg ahead for Middleton. Middleton clearing it to Goulet, who clears it into the U.S. zone. Housley's back there. He clears it straight up ice. Off a stick of Middleton. Erickson at center ice. Intercepted by Anderson. He hops in over the line. Anderson with Middleton in front. In line. The shot is loose in front of the net. Big save made by Barrasso. Now... At center ice, Ramsey, Erickson, Broughton, Broughton unable to hold that pass. Back comes Team Canada, but Langway picks it up. Langway deep in his own zone as Anderson moves into forecheck. Clear to center ice, Erickson, he shoots it into the Team Canada zone. Pure, leaving it for Randy Gregg. Ahead. At center ice, the pass deflected past Anderson. Busco goes down, Barrasso's out of the net. Bork moves in. Ahead for Anderson. Behind the net, Langway's got it. Langway starting out for the United States ahead at center ice now. Olchuk racing after it. Olchuk into the corner. Olchuk falls down. That's the puck behind the net. He passed that puck behind the net. And it's called for a high stick. Batted out of the air with a high stick. In any case, it'll be a face-off deep inside the zone. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Like a bird on a wing Grab on tight, get a hold of that thing We're hopping away Cutting clear through the blue Keeping friends close, making the most of those blue sky days And blue smiles along with you The taste keeps coming on through That's blue smiles along Anderson gets his stick up a little high. The U.S. forward here. There he is. He catches him in the face. Well, he's way behind the play. So here's Anderson a, go up. Here's a chance for the United States to get back into this hockey game. It's only a 4-2 game. They have Trotchy out there. They can put one in here. There's still lots of time. So it came at the six-minute mark of the period. 4-2, Canada leading. Gretzky will come out to... Help kill the path penalty with Mark Messier. And we've got Ray Bork out there as well on defense. The power play. Nestrache and Sutter, or at least, uh, and Johnson and Chelios. Right now it's Johnson into Trache. They move it around nicely in front. They score. Oh, boy, did they move that puck beautifully. That was a nice play. That's a patented play by Brian Trache. He and Bossy worked that play. You know, all through their careers they've done that. They Trotsky makes a good play here, getting the draw, getting possession of the puck. That's what you want to do on a power play. He's off to the side of the net. Sees his winger all alone in front of the net. Fear didn't have a chance. Some good passing by Team USA. Boy, I'll tell you, this is just a thing of beauty to look at. And you see it executed that well. Team Canada defenseman reacted a little slow uh, in getting to Trotsky, giving him a lot of time to, to take a look and make that pass. Joe Mullen who finished off the play. And here's Mullen now with the puck once again. A power play goal makes it 4-3. Trotche over the line now. Trotche to the net. And it's scooped out of midair there by Grant Fuhr. And he holds on in another face off in the Team Canada zone. 4-3. Canada leading. Six minutes and 20 seconds gone in the third period. That should give the United States team a little bit of spark, a little bit of hope after the second period. Again, you can't afford to take those cheap penalties. They, they end up costing you uh, in the long run. They sure do. Now Trottier remains out there. Mark Johnson and Joe Mullen. Chelios and Roberts on the points. On the faceoff. Back to Chelios it comes. Chelios leads it in. Now Trottier. Trottier flipping it out in front and fanning on it with Mullen. Back out the line. Roberts through a cloud. And it went by everybody. Chelios moves in. Born in against the boards. And it's hoisted down the ice by Doug Wilson. 
Now here's Peter Stastny catching up to the puck, hits the line, ducks it around, goes down, there'll be a penalty. Here's a chance to lose puck in front of the net, and finally Chelios picks it up, and it's called. There'll be a penalty to the United States. Peter, Peter, Peter Stastny, has got good moves, good speed. Roberts takes a run at him. He backs into him with his leg, and he trips Peter. Peter doesn't go down there. He's in on a two-on-one. Now, Roberts just a little bit late with a check, and uh, you get the man just a little bit by you, and now you've got a problem, and that's what happened to Roberts. He got the tripping. He got caught flat-footed at the blue line. So Canada trying to open up a two-goal lead again, and they'll have on the power play Peter Stosny along with Mike Bossy, Michelle Goulet, and Robinson and Wilson. Robinson with a shot. He's right on the rebound. Came back towards Goulet. Now it's cleared back against the boards by Stasny. Goulet's got the puck now. Try to force it in front. Robinson doing a little work in front. Now he's moved up, and Stasny's moved to the point position. Behind the net, Bossy, Bossy with the puck. Backhands it in behind the net. Goulet trying to kick it loose. Kicks it free along the boards, and it's just relayed by Dave Christian down the ice. And Fjord is back there, leaving it for Robinson. Robinson turning with it now. Here he comes. Robinson, Wilson. Wilson coming to the line. Wilson drops it off. Goulet. Goulet moving in deep. Clears it across ice now. Gretzky's on the ice. Robinson gets it. Robinson just cradling it near the line, and he mishandled it right along the line. Has forced now to get everybody back on side. Robinson. Gretzky. Gretzky beating it to Goulet. Yeah, he couldn't hold it. Bossy there. Uh, Langway goes down as he's checked by Robinson. Robinson heads for the bench. And it's Carpenter intercepted that pass. Bossy is Team Canada now having some problems. Bossy, and he tried to clear it. It went up over the glass into the penalty timekeeper's bench, and we'll have a face-off in the center ice zone with 51 seconds remaining in the power play. Team USA is putting a lot of pressure on Team Canada to make quick passes, and it's forcing them to make bad passes. They're doing a good job of killing penalties tonight. Well, there's Mike Bossy, a couple of goals the other night. That is an incredible record, an incredible record of consistency. 50 or more in seven seasons. Those, by the way, are his seven NHL seasons. Well, and imagine he's got a few more in him, too. He was a late draft pick. Played in Laval, just north of Montreal here. Ice, ice. City. Nice yeah, island over. Messier. There's it down to the line. Ramsey clearing it up to center ice. Right. Johnson, Johnson to the line. Troche moves it back now for Chelios. Chelios as they kill this penalty. Clears it ahead off Bork's leg. And Anderson's back to get it. Anderson. Long now. Coffee up to center ice. Right. Anderson again. Easing it ahead for Messier. Messier to the line. Messier. Trouble with it, but it's loose now. Here's a chance for Gretzky to Messier. Messier in deep. He's forced to hold the puck. Messier now out to the blue line for Ray Bork. Bork to Messier. Messier was surprised by that pass. Now Ramsey also coming in to help out. It's Anderson back up to the blue line. Here's the shot. It's wide of the net. Kopp, uh, Gretzky in against the boards now. Out to the blue line and cleared past Coffee down the ice. And Bork will go back to get it. Penalty is over. Bork. And as he touches it, icing is called. And is back into the U.S. zone for the faceoff. I think Wayne Gretzky's going to get a penalty here. That was an important kill for the United States team. They did a Good job. Now they're going to have a chance on a power play. Well, the fortunes are swinging here in this hockey game in the third period. Canada didn't get much going on that power play. It's interesting to see Messier on that opportunity as you see Gretzky against the boards here. He went in there, ducked a check. A little bit of a roughing penalty there. Retaliation. Going to give the Team USA a chance to get tie this hockey game up. Sutter out there now with Tonelli, Wilson and Robinson on defense, and Robinson's got the puck. His faceoff is won by Sutter. Robinson, and he's rammed in against the boards by his former teammate Rod Langway. Langway behind the net now. There are no former teammates in this hockey game. Here's Langway. Just the guys in the blue sweaters and the guys in the white sweaters. Here's Robinson turning. He's hooked down as he. Fun with that puck. Fans want a penalty. They're not going to get it. Now in deep. Erickson. Wilson goes in on him. Now Aaron Broughton. He's checked against the boards by Tonelli. Gets the pass back. Here's that Erickson again. Moving along with the puck. Erickson. 
Fading to the boards on this side now. Erickson trying to cut through, and he takes a hit from Doug Wilson. Cleared back to the blue line. Fusco keeps it in. Erickson. Erickson's check. Goes in deep now. Broughton, and it rolls to the side of the net. And there, Grant Fuhr covers it up and holds on for a faceoff with 1.15 left in the Wayne Gretzky penalty. And now Brent Sutter has got some things to say and deep in the Team Canada zone. And that is young Aaron Broughton. Well, now's not the time to take a double minor penalty with anybody because in the international rules, both men serve the penalty, whereas in the National Hockey League, they're, they're coincidental. They do, not, they do not serve the penalty. It's still a five on four. Looks like Brian Lewis isn't going to call anything at this time. Well, now teams are making a change as we look at Gretzky in the penalty box. 10-19 left in the hockey game. 4-3, Canada leading and a good game. This fella feeling a little pressure right now. Glenn Sather, coach of Team Canada. Done a great job of getting this club together in the usual short order required. I don't think that there can be a more efficient training camp in any sport anywhere than the one that Team Canada puts itself through every year. You just don't have a day to waste. Well, and most guys start uh, well. Uh, in advance of training camp and when they get there there's a lot of work to be done in a short period of time. Puck is cleared down the ice. One of the players that hasn't seen any ice time I don't think in this period has been Phil Housley but I have to think that he hasn't seen an awful lot of ice time in this game which would indicate he may be hurt a bit. Here's Johnson now clearing it to the far side and right past Mullen against the boards now Trottier Trottier in and it's cleared to the line but not out. Kelly has knocked it down. Trottier Trottier along the boards now. Trottier turning with that puck. He stopped up against the boards. Now clears it over. Here's Roberts. His shot deflected right in there. Look at that save. Great skate save made by Pure. The puck is cleared down the ice. That changed direction on him. Look at those quick reflexes that Pure has. Here's Chelios. Johnson has wrestled to the ice. And the puck is covered up by Pure. The crowd likes what it's seeing. 33 seconds left in the Wayne Gretzky penalty. Well, a few good chances there by Team USA. Here's the save that was made. You'll see the puck, I think, changed direction, Darrell. Was it tipped by? Oh, good. Right on the Trotche stick, and it was blocked by Coffee. Blocky doesn't cut. Coffee doesn't block that shot. I think it's in the net. So, Pure helped himself, and then Coffee helped Pure. Trotje taking the draw against Sutter. Now the fans are giving it to Trotje. There's a double reason for that. Uh, forget about the business of which team he's playing for. They don't like Brian Trotje in this city because of an incident during the Stanley Cup semifinals last year at Long Island when Trotje ran one of the favorite sons here in Montreal, Bob Ganey. Pretty good. He picked up a five-minute major. Trotje says, I deserve the five-minute major. I get paid for it. Here's Chelios. That shot, and that has put Messier on the limp of it. Roberts. Roberts gets the return pass now. Messier's out there for checking as Chelios couldn't hold it at the blue line. 20 seconds remaining in the power play. Now Sutter tips it by Chelios. Sutter getting around the defense and reaching for the puck, but Barrasso stepped up and cleared it away. Now Messier. Messier clearing it down past Chelios and into the U.S. zone. Seven seconds left in the power play now. Chelios starting out. The lead pass. Getting it to Roberts. Roberts now ahead. Trottier gets it over the line for Joy Mullen. Back to Trottier in the corner. Trottier had it go behind him. Sutter gets it loose. Clears it through center ice pass. Gretzky is out of the penalty box and down to Barrasso. Barrasso clears it to center ice. Messier eases it back into his own zone. Canada will make a change now. The lead pass. Oh, look at that play by Middleton. And Goulet stumbled going in over the line. Roberts takes a hit from Goulet. He's sitting on the puck and will hold it there for a faceoff. 8.41 left. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. Ladies and gentlemen, Honda ATC presents the greatest ride on earth. Park right in your own backyard. 
Well, there's the pensive-looking Bob Johnson, coach of the U.S. Watching his team trailing by a goal here, trying to think of something. No doubt he will, whether it will be successful or not. Perhaps up to Team Canada. Here's Middleton. Middleton clearing it back to Randy Gregg inside his own zone. Gretzky, Gretzky clearing it out. Cusco's got it. Eats it off the boards again. Middleton, he's checked on the play. Bork inside his zone, clears it to Goulet at center ice. Fusco takes over, brings it in over the line. He's checked out at center ice. Gretzky couldn't hold it. Langway cuts across ice, tries to chop it free, and then manages to control it. But then Goulet in front, trying to get it to Middleton. Fusco's got the puck. Fusco ahead at center ice now for Bobby Carpenter. He's over the line with old Chuck. There's the quick shot. It's wide of the net. Now along the boards and out to center ice, it comes again. Bill Housley. That's his first appearance on the ice in this period. Langway back deep in his own zone. Langway, four check by Gretzky, pins it in against the boards and gets the whistle deep inside the U.S. zone with 7.49 remaining. Canada leading 4-3 to three over the United States. It's been a great hockey game. We get almost eight minutes left and anything can happen. I think the U.S. A team has to be quite pleased with their performance so far. Hey, you talk about the United States. I touched on it during the first period. The trophies that this that are owned by members of the United States, and uh, we mentioned the Vezina and the Calder that went to Barrasso last year for the great year he had with the Buffalo Sabres. Don't forget that Brian Trotje won a Calder trophy in 1976. Two back-to-back -back Norris trophies to Rod Langway. Trotje, of course, won the Art Ross. Here's Bossy trying to clear it in front of the net. Out of center ice, Erickson, Lawton, Lawton chopping it into the Team Canada zone. Uh, behind the net now, Canada trying to get loose. Huddy circles back with it. Huddy to the far boards. Here's off the boards, past Bourne to center ice. Fired off the boards again. Coffee moving up on the play, trying to tie up his man in the center ice zone. That was Erickson. Coffee turning again. This time inside the zone, ahead for Bourne. Bourne at center ice, Bourne shooting it in. Housley off the boards. Coffee intercepted it. Now through a maze of players, try to work towards the net, but it put it right on the stick of Housley. And it's cleared rink wide and down into the Team Canada zone where Huddy's got it. Johnson moving in on him. He got the pass away. And it's cleared all the way down to Barrasso in the U.S. goal. And with Peter Stosny right on him, he holds it for the face off. 4 3, Canada leading. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. We know about the lands you hold, CN along your railway lines and watch with awe how you develop them sharing the opportunity to build towards Canada's financial future bringing the world of business to us connecting with the world and when you bring us in to share your progress we know who you're in business for Sutter out there with Tonelli. His wingmate, Mike Gartner, Wilson keeping it in. Wilson wearing it in deep. Sutter out to Tonelli now. There's the shot. It's right on. The rebound comes out. And goes away from Gartner and out to center ice. Wilson, Robinson, Robinson. Team captain, co-captain with Wayne Gretzky on Team Canada. Chelios deep inside the zone. Tonelli right in on top of him. Wilson moves up. And it's Johnson coming over the line now on a two-on-one to Troche. Troche shoots it in there. Save is made by Fjord. Out in front. Sutter's right there. Quick transitional play there by Wilson at center ice now. Gartner down over the line. Gartner stops. Feeds it through to Tonelli. The bouncing puck. And it's batted away by the defense. Robinson picks it up. Clears it along the boards. Mullen. Mullen at center ice. Out to Wilson at center ice. Wilson ahead. Cleared right back into the Team Canada zone. Robinson back there. Olchuk's on top of him, and Wilson comes in as Robinson takes Olchuk out of the play. At center ice now. Gartner shooting it in. Wide of the U.S. net. Carpenter. Carpenter gets the return pass at center ice now. Goes to the line with Christian. is checked away from him. And Langway moves up. Langway bumped by Bellows. Got clearing pass into the Canada zone. And out comes Ray Bork. Bork. For Canada, at center ice, Bork ahead, Anderson had it deflect away from him. Cleared in again, Langway will go in deep after it as Bellows comes in after him. Bellows bumping against the boards now, and he wrestles them to the ice. Two of them not too pleased with that, and Bellows especially. And the linesman will have to separate them. 
And all is calm once again. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. From Sears, an invitation to take advantage of some very special prices. Starting with Luxura cotton towels. Thick, absorbent, one-third off. Women's Shetland wool sweaters, just $13.99. And brass-plated lamps, updated to turn on or off with a touch. $10 to $20 off. To avoid disappointment, RSVP today at Sears, where you get your money's worth and more. Ron Roosh along with Daryl Sittler here at the Montreal Forum. There you see Brian Bellows, the first pick of the 1982 entry draft. Great star with the Kitchener Rangers. Memorial Cup champions. He took the Rangers into the Memorial Cup two years in a row. Won it the second year. And here's Ray Bork now deep in his own zone. And out they come once again. On the fly is Messier. He can skate. He's got it at center ice now, working to the line, and he just fed it ahead. Bellows wasn't ready for the pass. Greg has to get it at center ice. Back out at center again. It's cleared in, but Anderson was trapped in there. We'll have an offside call at the blue line. 4.55 left. There's Messier. Not too many can skate better than he can, Darrell. Well, that's for sure. He had a great playoff series, winning the Conn Smythe Award, and uh, he was a third-round pick, and Edmonton... You look at the picks they've had. Anderson was a late pick. Messi was a late pick. And they're one of the reasons why they won the cup. They have a lot of depth. They rely on Gretzky a lot for their scoring, but these guys do a big job. A lot of goals out of these people that are kind of <laughs> playing co-stars to, to Gretzky on the team. And when some guy's scoring 90 goals for you, I guess 50 doesn't mean much. Oh, you only got 50? Here's uh, Chelios, his shot, and it's deflected up into the crowd by Grant Fuhr. Anderson's had a strong game tonight. Breaks down that wing, he cuts in, he's made a few good plays, he hasn't any luck around the net, but I thought he's played a very strong game for him. There's Gretzky. We were talking about Messier. He did have a 50-goal season in 1981-82, 37 goals last year, 101 points. So. Maybe a better playmaker than he was before. He was a gunner before, didn't get too many assists, but. And a little extra curricular work there from Chelios. And Gretzky gives him a look. <laughs> well, the base off will be in the Team Canada zone. 4.36 left. All right, about that time of the game, when we look at Labatt's player of the game, what do you think, Darrell? You're four for four so far in the awards. Well, it's got to be Doug Wilson uh, for Canada, for sure. Possibly Langway uh, for USA. He's lo logged a lot of ice time. He scored an ice goal, and he anchors that defense. He does. There's a shot way out of his net. It's pure. Look at Robinson saving a goal. That saved the tie right there. There was a wide open net. Larry Robinson, six foot four. He's got the long reach. There's the shot. The rebound comes out all alone. Larry's got that long reach. He get a, gets his stick on it. A big save at this point of the hockey game. Well, we got a one goal game. Pure came out to cut off the angle and just didn't get the control the rebound as well as he would have liked to the skate save. Boy, Larry gets a big hand here. There's the hometown fans. Big break for Team Canada. Well, the big bird. He's been good in this hockey game. He's been good so far. He's I'm watching it, as we mentioned, a kind of rejuvenated Larry Robinson. I wonder if Fuhrer is saying to him, thanks, buddy. Take a look at it again. There's the shot from the point. The defenseman walking right in. Oh, Larry. Perfect. Huh. And right now, a meeting of the minds down there between Fuhrer and Robinson. Robinson saying, well, I owed you one. <laughs> I got some problems with the ice. So we'll take a break. 4.29 left. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV. 120 years ago, John Labatt brewed his beer slowly in small batches using 100% barley malt. That's how we brew John Labatt Classic today. Pure beer. It's Croy 
has improved. One of the longest aged beers in the world. It may cost a little more than ordinary beers, but because of the man, it's brewed without compromise. John Labatt Classic. There you see Dave Christian, a member of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team that won the gold medal at Lake Placid. Former captain of the Winnipeg Jets. Here's Carpenter trying to get loose in front of the net, but Gretzky came in and covered up. Up to Ramsey. Ramsey shooting it through the crowd. Bouncing puck. That went off Robinson. They score! We've got a tie hockey game with 4.17 remaining. The United States has battled back. And twice there, Team Canada has lost a faceoff, and that's where they got into trouble. If you win your faceoffs in your own end, you can get the puck out of there. There's a missed shot. Do not clear it. Didn't get a lot of wood on that puck. Back to the defenseman. Fear goes down. The rebound's right there to put it in. Nice goal by Christian. Well, Christian getting it in. Uh, Ramsey got the puck at the blue line and then a deflected shot. I think that was the key to it. And uh, they just kind of follow the bouncing puck from there. We're clearing uh, on the part of Team Canada. Um, Wilson stepping in there got the hit in, but he was a fraction too late with it. Well, now we've got an interesting finish to this one. Don't go away, folks. Bork getting it out to center right. Well, back comes Erickson. Erickson's in over the line now. Erickson chased off the puck there by Greg. Bork along the boards. And out comes Canada again. Sutter can't get loose. Catching up to it now is Greg. He feeds it ahead for Sutter. Sutter to the line. Tonelli. Tonelli stepping through now. He's got Gardner in front. The bouncing puck is put wide. Gardner out in front. Sutter couldn't get it. Now back out to the blue line. Kept in. Shot wide of the net. After it is Gartner, he rams Roberts against the board. Tonelli goes in against the boards with Neil Broughton. Erickson, clearing it out to center ice now. Randy Gregg ahead for Sutter. Sutter to the line. Sutter clearing it in deep. Barrasso in to get it. Now as it's cleared around the boards, Erickson. Eric speeds it past uh, Tonelli, and Chelios has got it. Chelios. Erickson against the boards for the U.S. Coffey comes in on him. The puck bounces through center ice now. Here's Lawton. And it's fed back inside Team Canada territory. Peter Sussney ahead for Bourne. He can't get it. Bourne's offside, and Bossy brought the puck in. Bourne was desperately trying to get back over the blue line. It's called on the offside and a faceoff outside the blue line with 3:03 left, and we've got a 4-4 tie. Well, I don't think Canada's going to be over. Be pleased that this game ends up in a tie. They're expecting to win this hockey game. They would like to end up in first place, so that possibly they play a weaker. Weaker team going into the semifinal round. Uh, it's an important win for them here, and uh, let's see if they can get a goal in the next three minutes. Peter Stasny will face off against Brian Trottier just outside the blue line. Trottier, of course, a master at the faceoff. And it's Stasny bats it in over the line. Langway's back there for it. Bossy moving in on top of him. Three minutes left in this hockey game. Ramsey along the boards. Stasny digs it out. It gets by everybody. Out at center ice, Robinson. Wilson. Wilson back in his own zone. Leads it back to Robinson. Robinson off the boards now for Bossy. Bossy ahead for Stasny. Circling with it. Bringing it back in is Trottier. Robinson. Robinson turning the side of the net now. Bossy. Bossy. Out at center ice, the bouncing puck comes down and at the feet of Langway, and it's third back into the Team Canada zone, and Wilson, the U.S. content to get a tie, it would appear here. Bourne ahead, Peter Stosny's over the line, now Bourne going for the net, and Stosny is double teamed as he hit the line, and it's Langway ahead for Trottier. Trottier's over the line, shoots it in deep. The U.S. making quick changes now. Coffey's got the puck ahead. Bringing it out to center ice now for Canada is Huddy to Peter Stosny at full flight over the line. Now Peter Stosny trying to get it in front of the net. Rolled it into the goal mouth area. Chelios collected it and shot it out to center ice. Now here's Olchuk. Olchuk over the line now. Christian in the corner along with Coffey. Buck pops into the air. Carpenter moves in. Players skate by it. Huddy goes after it. He feeds it along the board. Gets it again and he's at center ice with it. Huddy shooting it in. Drifting shot wide of the net. Goulet. Cleared behind the net now. 
Gretzky after that puck. Gretzky out in front. It's loose there. And a great chance by Goulet. And the whistle goes as the referee lost sight of the puck. Thought it was under that pile up in front of the net. And we'll have a face-off deep in the U.S. zone with 1.25 remaining. Well, the crowd reacted to Gordy Roberts, who had a broken stick in his hand, and it looked like he maybe he didn't know it. I don't know. The puck was in front of him. He played a little bit. The ref was on the far side of him and didn't notice that he had the broken stick in his hand. Uh, could have been a penalty on the USA. There he is there. He played the puck, pulled it into him. The ref had seen that. It would have been a penalty. Very important face-off coming up right now here in... The United States zone. Gretzky will take the draw. I'm sure they'll want Brian Trottier out there if they can get him out there. And here comes Trottier back from the bench now. Took a bit of a rest by going for a new stick. Well, they're putting their experience out there there. Langway, Trottier. Well, there's a few years of experience out there for Team Canada, too. Middleton, Wilson, Robinson, Gretzky, along with Goulet. Here's Ramsey. Ramsey behind the net now. Cleared along the boards. Robinson pinches in. Here's a two-on-one at center ice. Trottier to Erickson. Trottier, Erickson, and Wilson got in the way and broke it up. Now Trottier being forced out to center ice. Goulet's on top of him. Trottier battling with him now, and Erickson came in to help out. 104 left to the line. Here's Lawton. He's checked on the play. Lawton clears it now back out to center ice, and Langway's there. Gretzky moving in on him. It's fed deep inside the U.S. zone where Ramsey's got it. Erickson, it goes by him. Canada will regroup in its own zone. Bork. Bork over to the far side now. Here's the lead pass. It goes past Gretzky. It was tied up at the line. Ramsey knocked him down. Icing is called as Langway picks it up. And a faceoff now deep in the Team Canada zone. There's Mike Ramsey. The Buffalo Sabres. And he has played a lot of great hockey for that Buffalo team. Well, he was on that gold medal team in 1980. I think he's somewhat of an unrated, uh, unrated defenseman. Uh, you don't say that to Montreal Canadiens fans. He was a very, very instrumental in taking the Canadians out of the playoffs a couple of years ago. He played some great hockey against them. There's Glenn Sather. Now he's got to watch a very important faceoff right here. And here's a fellow who's got to be very pleased with the turn of events here in the third period as the U.S. has come from behind with two goals to tie this game. Bob Johnson. He's got his son out there right now, Mark Johnson, along with Dave Christian. Well, the faceoff's important here. Christian's uh, right-handed shot drawing back into the slot area. Uh, what have we got here? Brian Lewis has gone over to the penalty timekeeper's bench for some reason. Timeout has been called. USA has called the timeout, so they're going to discuss just what they want to do with this faceoff. Shots on goal at this moment. Canada 27, the U.S. 24. It's a very good indication of the way this hockey game has gone. Sometimes it's deceptive, but boy, it's been a pretty even hockey game, and of course the scoreboard shows that. It's been a great hockey game. Before the Canada Cup series started, we anticipated that there would be some great hockey played, and we saw the Russia-Czech game last night, Czechoslovakian game last night, tonight. Another great hockey game. We saw Bob Johnson talking to his son there, the visor on his helmet. There he is. Oh, Johnson. Johnson and Johnson, if you will, if you'll forgive me. I don't think the truck has. 39 seconds left. I noticed Trache going out on the ice. He's one of the toughest guys to, that I faced in the faceoffs and on the faceoffs in the National Hockey League. And they're setting up for one good shot here with 39 seconds left. Here's an opportunity to maybe get a chance to score on goal. Mangway at the point, uh, ready to blast it. Trache. In there to take the draw against Brent Sutter from the faceoff. Sutter hooks it up against the board, goes out after it. Langway tries to keep it in, does. And a shot behind the net now. 32 seconds left. Canada takes over with Messier. Messier, rink wide at center ice now. Here's Gartner over the line. Sutter in the slot. Gartner hooking it in deep now. Takes a big hit in there from Ramsey. Jams it in. He'll try and get a faceoff in there if he can, and his whistle dead. There'll be a faceoff deep in the U.S. zone with 18 seconds left. Well, that's a good play. Uh... 
for Canada if they can get a face off the end get things settled down Glenn Sather can put out the guys he wants right now and maybe get a shot on goal right from the face off see Messi out there he's another strong face off guy in the National Hockey League he will probably take it so what have we got we've got Gretzky Messier to take the draw the point men are Randy Gregg and Ray Bork and I think we've got another timeout call. Now, I'm not so sure that under international rules we've got timeouts. <laughs> However, nobody's complaining too much. Neither one of these teams will are used to it. I wonder if we try a timeout when Tihanov is coaching against Team Canada. It might be a little different story. You might need Aggie Kuklowicz down by the bench <laughs> to explain it. Again. Well, the gathering of the minds at the U.S. bench. Trotsky, of course, is going to stay out there. Langway always in close hockey games. The final five minutes, I don't think Langway ever gets a breather. And that's why he, one of the reasons why he has won a couple of Norris trophies in a row. There's Rod. Looks like Team Canada is going to put Doug Wilson out there for the big shot again. And uh, they were so successful in the first period of getting the puck to Wilson, and he had five shots on goal in the first period. I think he's had just one here in the third. He had one in the second as well. And then right in the middle there, that's Sam Pollock. Looks a little nervous at this point. Well, now Messier. Robinson's the only one playing back near the line. It's tapped out near the line now. Wilson trying to keep it in. Put hopped over a stick. Turning with it now with 13 seconds left. Wilson will hit the line. Gets it over the line. And it's offside. Uh, the two-line pass. And so I think there'll be a face-off at the blue line, is it? Yes, so it wasn't a two-line pass. Just offside. I think it was Anderson who broke in too quickly on the left wing. So now we've got 10 seconds left. Rochier again will take the draw against Messier. This time Robinson will come up and play up with the forwards. Now Wilson moves up as well. So they that's behind Wilson once again. Gretzky. Gretzky can't control it. To the line now comes Johnson. Robinson fights him off. Hooks it three. Three seconds left. This game is going to end in a tie. Well, an interesting turn of events here at the Montreal Forum. Team Canada was worried about the United States, and rightfully so. Uh, from the standpoint of this game, I think the United States would have to feel that they won the hockey game. As, as, for them, it's a, a great boost. It carries them on further on in this tournament. They did what they wanted to do tonight. They would have preferred the win, but a 4-4 tie is, is like a victory to them. Well, after thumping Sweden 7-1, to one, nobody expected that to begin with, and then tying Team Canada, it definitely gives them a big boost. And their next game's against uh, the Czechoslovakian team in the Buffalo Auditorium, which is a little smaller ice surface, and and the Czechoslovakian team have lost, I think, their last five hockey games, including the exhibition game. So the United States has a little string going here. They're going to be uh, they're going to be there in the playoff round, I'm sure. Well, the goals in the third period by Mullen at 6:08, eight seconds after a penalty was called to Glenn Anderson for high sticking. Trottier and Johnson drawing assists there, and then at 15:43, Dave Christian, from Mike Ramsey. And that came just after a big save was made by Larry Robinson right at the side of the net. So they saved the tie there, but they couldn't save it all the way because just a few seconds later they came back and tied it up at four. The final shots on goal, the USA outshot Canada eight to six in the third period. Final shots on goal, Canada 27, the USA 24. Well, now we'll get out ice level for the presentation of the Labatt's Player of the Game Awards. Le joueur par excellence de la rencontre pour l'équipe des États-Unis recevra une caméra Canon T70. The Labatt's player of the game for Team USA, he will receive a Canon T70 camera. Ladies and sign, number five, Rod Langway. You're on a streak, Daryl. Yeah, you played very well tonight. Le joueur par excellence de la batte de la rencontre pour l'équipe du Canada 
recevra une sculpture Eskimo de gracieuseté de Esso. The Labatt's player of the game for Team Canada will receive an Inuit carving provided through the courtesy of Esso. Numéro 19, number 19, Larry Robinson. Well, there's Larry. He played a great game. He played a great game defensively. He saved that one goal for Team Canada. Played a strong game, definitely did. Doug Wilson had that great first period, the five shots on goal, and he was dominant, but of course, the U.S. came back, and they tied this hockey game. So the final score, Canada 4, the United States 4. This is Labatt's Canada Cup on CTV.